everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today I'm going to be playing some solo Dune Imperium. Hello everyone, joining live. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. And I'm sorry if I say it wrong, Christogen. Thank you for becoming a producer and hitting that join button down below and supporting the channel. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Even though you can never seem to catch us live. Hopefully, in the future, uh, we'll see more in the live chat. Showing off your cool red dye. <laughs> Speaking of cool red dye, I see Tara's here. Hello. Hey, Kate. Hey, Sakabra. Hey, Yogi. Hello, hello, everybody. You can hear me okay? Everything's okay? I'll just have to mess around with settings and stuff, switching from a two-player stream to a one-player stream, and I'm also a little worried something's not going to work, or I left a mic on or something. But we look like we're here. All right, so today we're playing solo in this game, uh, which is different than the two-player, which has an AI, a uh, spoiler character, they call it, which I've never heard that before, but I guess it's just like kind of a simple way of spoiling your plans. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the AI for the solo in this game is a little more involved. It has uh, full-page rules versus the two-player, which is like kind of like a half-page rules. Because it's uh, more 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 to it in the solo player. So we're actually running two AI characters that actually do a lot more. There's uh, different cards that get put in the AI's deck. And you actually take out some two-player cards. Uh, but we are going to use the app again today like we did in yesterday's two-player playthrough. If you're looking for that playthrough or curious about it, uh, check out the playlist link down in the video description. Also, uh, I forgot to mention it yesterday, I'm using an eRaptor board game insert for this. Uh, if you're interested in that insert or want to see my thoughts on it, I've also linked that video down below. Um, and it should be in the playlist also that I just mentioned. Uh, but yeah. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, yeah. So... Do my usual, for those that didn't watch or just curious about the solo playthrough, uh, Dune Imperium, if you didn't know, is uh, based on the Dune IP. Uh, it's I don't I don't know how tightly it's tied to the IP again, I don't know much about the IP, but uh, the game's really good, hence why it's at an overall 76 out of all board games that exist on Board Game Geek, uh, which caught my attention since the game only came out in 2020, like late 2020 also, and within like a month or two it was already like shooting up the charts, and I was kind of blown away by that, so... Uh, yeah, I wanted to get it and try it. It just went out of stock after the first run, uh, sold out around the holidays here in Canada of 2020. And then I had, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to get a copy till about, I think like three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I think is what it was about. Um, and I was finally able to get a copy on an order, but it was like a pre-order for restock and then finally delivered only like a couple weeks ago. Um, I played it only once solo so far. And I've played a couple times two-player, and uh, so today we'll look at the solo. Uh, but don't watch this for strategy. I mean, maybe we'll figure out something cool, and we can smoke the AI, and I'll come up with some crazy strategy they didn't realize. But again, there's so so much uh, variability and stuff uh, in this game and replayability. I feel, but again, I've only that's like only seeing like it played a few times. So uh, again, I was asked yesterday about balance. I thought about it more. Uh, I, I don't know how balanced the game is, but it definitely feels like it was designed for a four-player game. And I see on VGG here it's best three to four. And you can tell it was fully designed around the three to four player. Because the two-player needs an AI to make it three-player. And then a solo game needs two AIs to make it a three-player. So it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it's definitely... I, I, I picture it being better at like four-player or three-player. So keep that in mind. But obviously it's fine as a solo game because of the fact during COVID... Uh, where we have lockdowns, people aren't really getting together as much. Maybe they are now, but when this game came out, they weren't. And yet this game shot right up there on the chart. So, yeah, that shows you that people even playing it solo and two-player and stuff were, were having a good time and wanted to rate it on BGG. Thomas, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. I don't mention it enough, but if you're looking to help with the channel, cost no money, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, helps the channel grow, helps YouTube, uh, the YouTube algorithm present videos and share the videos to other... Other people who are interested in similar videos, similar channels that maybe don't find our channel and stuff. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. If you can do that, hit the like button and subscribe. I, I forget, I, being like a marketing guy here, uh, yeah, I, I feel weird. But uh, thank you for everyone who subscribes, joins the channel, hits the like button, backs us on Patreon. You guys are all amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, all right. 
Let's get to it. So today we're going to use the, like yesterday, we're going to use the app, uh, the Direwolf Game Room app, and play the Dune Companion app through the Direwolf Game Room app so that we get the extra feature of the uh, Imperium deck churning the market row uh, for us. So if you didn't know that, a uh, little tip I gave out in yesterday's playthrough, uh, download the Direwolf Game Room app on your Android or iOS, I assume, uh, and from there, in your collection, launch the Dune Imperium app, and it will give you some additional features, including a card in the AI deck, which is not in the physical version, to cycle the market, which was definitely missing from the game. I hope if they ever release an expansion for this game, they include the cards that churn the deck for the House Hagal AI deck uh, in the future. So that players who don't want to play with an app or a phone or a tablet near the table can just play with the classic cards and actually have it feel like it was properly designed. Because without that churning, it just feels like some games just feel lame. Needing an app for an app, yes. <laughs> Wild Inferno here, loving this game. Quick, easy setup can knock out lots of games. So, like, yeah, I, I feel that. Like the playtime, it's smooth. Like once you get used to it, uh, it's definitely easy. Uh, and yeah, it's it's not bad setup. Even with this E Raptor thing, um, I know I talk about in the video, but I just love. Ins I'm sure there's other inserts that do this too. Um, but the idea that you could just have a player starting cards. And all their components like in a little box and you know just pull out the ones you need depending on your player count and pass them out and they can play out of here i really like that i really like that so easy for setup so when i'm done i just scoop up all the yellow throw them in a container throw them back in no baggies separating stuff uh it's really nice anyways all right let's uh set up some stuff here so we're gonna play with these four conflict cards um at the bottom there is some different setup with solo uh which i want to go over and we're gonna get five cards from the level twos for conflicts, whoops. Okay, let's just, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's just throw these over here. And out of the level ones, we're gonna get one card. With nail, hello, says greetings from Tel Aviv. Welcome, greetings from Canada. <laughs> awesome. Oh. Paul is a hard character to win with. What character? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Who's playing with a hard character? I don't know what you're talking about, Wild Inferno. So crazy. I think you're seeing things. I, I think something's wrong with your monitor. You probably saw a different character. I don't know. So. <laughs> is there a recommendation on a character I should play with? <laughs> this guy is the recommended one. Uh, this guy's recommended to play your first solo game with to learn, which I did the other day. He's straightforward, so uh, it keeps it basic for me. I'll probably forget the ability. I do that sometimes where I forget I can look at the top card of my deck anytime. So it helps him. He draws a card off his signet ability, but he's just so straightforward. But it's nothing fancy. Like, I, I don't see, like, yeah, the knowledge of seeing the top of your deck, but I feel like I just would always want to draw cards anyway. It's not like I'm going to see the top of my deck and decide not to draw cards but you could see the top of your deck and decide i'm not going to play this yellow triangle card right now because i see the top of my deck and knowing that i could go here and draw instead i will get the alliance or the faction symbol that i need to go to earlier in the turn and it can change how you play your whole turn i guess uh like knowledge of your deck is obviously good but again i don't know the game well enough it's kind of weird to give this to a new player to tell them to play solo with a, an ability that is requires more knowledge and deeper knowledge of the game to be able to evaluate cards that you're going to see and play in your turns. I thought that's a weird, weird call, but I think they did it just because it's super straightforward. Like, you just draw a card as his ability um, on playing his signet ring. Got his daddy. Uh, with Nail said, I played the exact setup with Paul and Lost. That's weird. Uh, when I played my practice game, I barely won. Like, barely, barely won. Um, so it is tight. Uh, and they recommend to play with this Earl and this uh, the Beast guy here uh, as your starting opponents. And I think it's because their abilities are very straightforward. So it keeps the... Uh, there's no confusion while you're running a solo AI and getting hung up on things. Because the other characters maybe have more complex abilities. But is there a recommendation? Like, do you guys want me to play with something different? I mean, I'll try whatever. I, I, I don't care. Uh... 
For the one star characters. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So that's complex. This guy's also one star. The one Mel played with yesterday. He seems really powerful. I, I like this idea that he draws cards off paying Solari to the uh, to these spaces up here. Because you want to use those spaces sometimes. I'm just getting a card draw off it. Okay, I'll keep it the same. I'll keep it the same. Nope, nope. Hey, I might lose today too. Don't, don't, like I said, don't watch me to know how to win or anything. Uh, this game's still new to me. I'm still figuring it out. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna have some fun today playing solo, showing off how solo works. If we crush the AI, yeah, I'll feel better about it. <laughs> if you guys want to help, play along. Uh, we'll discuss choices like we usually do, so feel free to get involved. Um, just one second. Uh, I'll just be right back. One second, I gotta change something. I think that's better. Okay, I think that's better. All right. Um, okay. Yogi, that guy, I know I want to do that. The guy we played yesterday, or we were looking at yesterday at the end of the stream says, play the guy that guesses two factions and boosts when four combat. I'm not going to, I'm going to keep it standard. Uh, with Nail says it'll just help him to see maybe he's playing, playing something wrong or whatever. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, we'll just play this setup. We'll play this game again on the channel for sure. I do want to try that guy. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can get some more players to play at the table. I definitely want to see this thing at three or four player. Uh, four players especially. I want to see. I love when games get the full player count all fighting for a limited amount of spaces and stuff. Uh, and the tension involved in that. And the bluffing of who's going to put certain units into the fight and that kind of thing. Alright, so we explained more about how the game worked yesterday. You'll kind of see it today as I just play through it. Um, but in yesterday's two player stream, I talked more overall about how the game works, but it is just straight worker placement, straight deck building. Let me shuffle up this deck and we'll get ourselves a market row. Uh, and then there's this little conflict that happens at the end of every round. Um, and yeah, you'll see, you'll see, it'll just make sense as, as we go, but you're trying to like race up tracks here to get victory points. This is the victory point symbol. And we're going to track our victory points here on this track. So once someone gets a 10, that signals the end of the game. Or if this conflict deck runs out, which draws a card every single round. So there's two timers on the game. And then I'll explain when we go to spots what we're doing. I guess it's also like a resource management kind of game. Yeah, it's very cool. Very, very cool. Oh, with Nail, you joined a little late. I already talked about that. Yeah, so so I'm using the... Um, I already talked about the... Uh, I talked about yesterday's stream, too. Um, use the Direwolf Game Room app to launch the uh, Direwolf Companion app, and it'll get you the ability to churn cards, uh, which I still think is a scumbag move. A way Direwolf just wants you to get an app, use an app so that they can show you their other digital games, which, you know, is probably their bread and butter. Um, so they're trying to, trying to get physical gamers into, into their apps to see that they have digital board games and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's smart marketing wise, but it's kind of a scumbag move to not include those cards in the, uh, physical game, I, I think, or even in the base app. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I don't know why two apps are involved, but anyways. So yeah, we're going to use the more feature rich app of ads for their stuff yeah with nail i talked about it yesterday in my first game playing this game solo there was no churn and i just felt like it was broken something was wrong because i had like an eight cost card a couple six cost cards five a couple five cost cards or something there and i wasn't able to buy cards in cycle i kept having to buy these and it was just clogging up my deck and it was very messy i still pulled it out but it was like man it just made me think the deck building was sucked in this game but uh, if you get more players at the table and they're all buying cards from the deck, you, you assume in the AI it would simulate that. That's what most deck building and, you know, Euro kind of games do is if, if spaces are being taken and resources are being taken by their players in a normal game full of players and, and decks are being drawn from and cards are being discarded and all that kind of stuff, that needs to happen in an AI game. Uh, I feel if you want to simulate the full player count or, you know, the three player count in this case, uh, game, you gotta you gotta churn that market because nobody likes playing a deck building game where the market just sits there and, it, and it's the same stuff. 
Because if you're trying to build a strategy around having certain factions' cards work together, and they're just all sitting down in the deck, you're never going to get to them. Uh, and by the time you do, it's like too late. Who cares? Uh, so it's, yeah, definitely a missed opportunity. So yeah, what I recommend, I'm sure somebody's done it on BGG, probably made the files to make those cards. If not, somebody will. And you'll just be able to get them, print them out or whatever. Proxy them, whatever you want to do. Those cards should be in the game. Uh, they should be in the physical box. It's stupid that they're not. Uh, a little frustrating. All right, here we go. We're getting our little market set up here. All right, we got a decent cost spread. We got a couple one and two cost cards here uh, in the market. So some little trashing ability there. Got the Fremen Bond getting some spice off the Spice Hunter. We got, we got a decent mix. We got a, a Fremen card. We got an Emperor card and a Spacing Guild card. Uh, this Emperor card here can get you up to the Emperor space, obviously. And then Solari. And if you hold it till the end. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't know there was victory points on cards in this deck. I've not seen all the cards in here, obviously. Because I've never seen this one or this one before. Whoa, I just noticed that. <laughs> so I'm on my fourth. Yeah, fourth fourth playthrough of this game. And this is the first time I realized there is possibility of victory points out of the Imperium deck. So I could build a strategy around that. Because again, without the deck churn and solo and two player by default, uh, relying on strategy from the deck before you sit down at the table is like impossible. But now that I've seen these, uh, I think I should kind of like either work towards a spice, uh, spice slash influence with the spacing guild, or maybe more expensive, I could go for a Solari one. The only problem is this card costs six. So trying to grab this card ugh, might take a little bit of work. It depends on my first draw and how quickly I can get to the High Council Guild, or the High Council Space, sorry, uh, get a seat at the High Council. But yeah, that's interesting. I did not know you could do that. I did not know. So it, it stays in your deck. So like as it comes around, you might get a few times during the game to actually fire that off. So if you get it early enough and we get some spice going, for example, for this one, man, that's cool. I've never played a strategy where I've worked with the spicing guild very hard. Yesterday I did it a couple times just to get this boost of, of cubes. But yeah, already I'm seeing different possibilities here that I didn't know existed. I'm blown away. Got to get an alliance. Oh, it's a, oh yeah, sorry. You have to have an alliance with the Space Guild. Yeah, so you're not going to get that many victory points because you're going to probably use this card a lot to get up on the Space Guild, right? Unless we see other Space Guild cards. Yeah, so the strategy might not work at all. But I mean, if we get one victory point off of a card that's in our deck, that's already one other option, right? And that's why I'm saying as long as we align that with trying to get victory points off the influence track here, uh, they'll go together. And if we try to grab Spice... Spice will lead to us more often getting more powerful spaces from each of the factions if we're not using it for this, right? So if we go heavy on spice gathering, uh, it should lead to a victory point or two from this. And it should lead us to get some victory points here. And worst case, it gets us some more Solari. And which we can use for other things. I don't know. That's my theory. Again, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Wild Inferno says, I had heard they didn't think about churning the cards at lower player counts and they realized their mistake after the game was out. Then came the app to fix that. Here's why I don't believe that. Uh, because why isn't it in the default app? I have a feeling they designed it from scratch as a way to like, let's leave that out and use it as a marketing tactic to pull people into our app so we can advertise more direwolf stuff to them. Because why isn't it in the basic companion app? And why does the basic companion app advertise the game room app to you when you launch it? So it's not like they haven't had time to develop for that regular app. They, they specifically went in the regular app to advertise the other app that tells you it'll upgrade the features to this game. So like this, I, I feel like it was all planned. I, I feel like it was all planned this way. It was like a marketing strategy to get physical gamers into the digital space. That, that's, I, I highly agree with that. Unless it was an afterthought, like you're saying, where they thought it, and then they were like, hmm, okay, instead of trying to fix it, uh, let's use it as another way to pull people into our second app. I don't know, a scumbag move either way. The right way, if they realized it, they messed up, is to offer a print and play 
fix cards or a pack, you know, or a way players can get mailed the cards, you know, that kind of stuff. But obviously that's more expensive. But if they include them in a future expansion, okay, maybe, then I'll realize maybe they made a mistake and then they're trying to offer a way for players who really love the game to get that. But it doesn't make the game unplayable. It just makes it like, I don't know, just, it's weird. That's weird. Anyways. But again, you can house rule it super easy. Uh, is just every round, like roll a d6 and just discard a card. You know, roll a d6. If you roll a six, you don't discard anything. If you roll, a, uh, you know, the one through five, just discard that card at the end of the round. That's like the easy way to physically fix it. I've seen that kind of similar thing done in other deck building AI kind of games. Just some random way to just pitch a card or a couple cards. Super easy fix. But I highly recommend if you're playing this game at lower player counts, do something to house rule to churn the deck a little bit, to cycle the cards a little bit. Um, it definitely makes it more interesting because if you're trying to go for a certain card or it, it just changes it up so it doesn't leave cards sitting there for players to kind of like plan for a while. I don't know. And then they can see cards and change and make it more interesting. All right. Uh, anything else we need to do for setup? I think we got all that. So let's let's see here. So there is a separate sheet that comes in the game uh, that specifically talks about, uh, it's two-sided. Uh, on the one side, it talks about the AI, how it works, the general stuff about the AI. Then it goes into two-player stuff at the bottom, which we're going to ignore today. But then the solo has a whole other side to it, which we're looking at, we'll look at on the screen here. Um, so the automated stuff, so during, uh, this is stuff that applies to two-player and solo. So during the player turns, uh, they'll take agent turns, but not reveal turns, okay? Uh, we draw a card off the deck. We're going to use the app, though, to draw our cards, and we have that additional turn feature, as I said. Uh, it will reshuffle. has a reshuffle card built into that, too. Uh, I don't know if the reshuffle is in solo, though. Uh, but anyways, the rivals advance on the influence tracks, and we're going to see they do earn bonuses. It's not 100% true. Uh, they will use their Signet Ring ability in solo only. They don't use it in two-player. Um, and they will rec uh, recruit troops. And then if it's combat space, they'll always deploy up to two if they can afford it to put uh, guys in from their garrison into the conflict. And combat, it says here, when combat begins, each rival, if they have at least one troop in the combat, they'll flip a card off the Hogal deck. Uh, and they'll take the amount of swords on the bottom to determine their... Um, combat strength and then all the players get to then do a normal passing back and forth playing conflict cards if they want if they have any combat combat cards in their conflict cards <laughs> uh, in solo play you face off against two rivals it says you don't use the normal rules they don't build decks uh, but they do rush for victory points uh, or go for victory points and uh, the setup here so there is difficulty levels. This doesn't exist in the two-player version, but there are difficulty levels. So we're going to play on Mercenary Novice today. Again, it's only my second time playing solo, my fourth time playing the game. Uh, but we'll just try it Novice because the next one up is Veteran. I definitely do not feel like a Veteran player, and I'm definitely no expert. And I'm definitely not Expert Plus. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're just going to play Novice today, try it out. We're just trying to show the solo mode, uh, how it works, but... Uh, we do get extra starting resources over the normal setup, so one Solari, one Spice. Um, and we also... Oh, sorry. Uh, we also... Five Solari... Oh, this is the token. I'm trying to figure out what this is. Uh, so there is a possibility of changing the Mentat space if you're upping the difficulty. Uh, you put a five cost token on it, so instead of two cost on the Mentat space to take that little neutral worker, uh, it would cost uh, five instead. But we're not playing with that. But if you play on veteran, you're gonna it's gonna cost you five to take the Mentat worker and draw a card, five Solari, uh, which is weird and neat, but uh, it just makes it not really get used except for by the AI a lot more. Uh, so rival starting garrison troops. So on the higher difficulty levels, the AI actually gets garrison troops. In the version we're playing today, they do not. And there's this whole conflict cards above rival sword masters. This just means after a certain amount of conflict cards, so after five are drawn, uh, the rivals are going to get their third workers each. And I'll show you how they set that up and then how I do it. Uh, they rivals do not get extra starting resources, but later they will get intrigue cards. So they collect cards, they collect 
water, they collect spice, they collect Solari, uh, they collect my tears uh, when they defeat me in victory, or in uh, combat, sorry, when they have victory in combat. Um, uh, so for each rival, you choose a color, and we're gonna use, we already, I'll show you that when we get to the board. Um, we obviously don't have to remove the two player cards from the deck, that's done already, we're playing with the app. And I think all the rest of the stuff's difficulty. And it says the rival on our left takes the first player marker. So we'll just give that to the beast uh, here. We'll just give that to him. So he's first player. Uh, during rival's turns, uh, your rivals each... Uh, your rivals each take agent turns in sequence with you. So like yesterday in the two-player game, the rival, you have to remember, it goes after the first player takes an uh, agent turn, not a reveal turn. So, uh, in this case, they're just like other players. So we're going to go around the table. So we'll go in order and we'll keep cycling around and around. First player will change after every round. So that's treated like normal. Okay, so we just take their turns in order. There's no trying to remember like, wait, was I first player? Did I, what turn did I just take? Does the AI go now? Do they not go? Uh, and as long as they have agents slash workers, they will go. Uh, when a rival uses Harvest Spice to send an agent to the board, it gains all spice there, base and bonus. So yesterday in the two-player, they just clear the spice away, and today they're actually going to collect the spice. You'll see why in a second. And for combat, uh, rivals gain the first and second place rewards from conflicts, even things they otherwise don't take from bonus spaces. They gain victory points and influence with factions. They gain Solari Spice, Water, and Intrigue cards, and we keep them in their supply. Uh, they win control of board spaces, placing a control marker on the flag below it. On future turns, they get the control bonus whenever you or a rival sends an agent there. They also receive the defensive bonus of one troop if a conflict over that space is later revealed. All this is the same as a normal player, pretty much. And they do gain the Mentat and use it as an agent on the next round. So the important thing that we're going to have to keep referring to throughout the game is the spending resources table in the bottom left. So anytime. Instantly, when a rival gets three Intrigue cards, or three Water, seven Solari, or seven Spice, right away they trade it in, they get a victory point. So they're collecting all these resources. They don't play Conflict cards in combat or anything like that. They're just treating them like a normal resource. We've seen this used as in AI and other games, uh, playing solo and, and, and lower player counts. Uh, and three Water, seven Solari, seven Spice. As soon as they collect it, trade it in, victory point. So they're going to keep moving up the victory point track throughout the game, and we'll kind of see where they're at and maybe change their strategy based on what's happening. Uh, and like in the two-player game, they will gain uh, influence tokens from the factions. We can steal them back if we bypass them on the influence track. So there will be some fighting over, over victory points here. Uh, they're a little more in your face than the uh, two-player version. Um, so the sword master stuff. Uh, so normally, uh, they're, or in, the, in the difficulty chart, it's telling us to put their two rivals. Okay, so let me show you here. So they're the red and green. So this is by default how you're supposed to set it up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I drew the top five cards off. You put the conflict deck there. You're supposed to kind of put these guys in the deck. Okay, literally in the deck. They say this. It's no joke. Uh, I had to like reread it a couple times. I was like, what? Uh, you literally put their meeples in the deck and put the five cards on top. So as you're drawing, when you finally reveal them... <gasps> They're there! I didn't know! Uh, then you give these to them to use on their turns. Well, I'm not going to do that because it, it's silly. The deck falls over. It's dumb. I, I don't know why they would do that. It seems so weird. They could have just included a single card you slide in that says, give them their things now, you know? Uh, what I was doing at first, I just put an upside down spare card in there. But all I'm going to do is flip this top card upside down. So when we see this upside down card, we know to give them their workers and uh, we'll move on. And then we can have a nice little little contained deck here, how cards are supposed to go on top of each other without meeples in between. We're not playing uh, Rampage, AKA Terror and Meeple City here. We're not putting meeples in, in between components and trying to blow them over or anything. So uh, none of that happening today. All right. The Beast AI should have a Solari and a Spice. I don't think you should. Oh, is that what it's supposed to be? Oh, is it first player gets that? But why? Why would you think that? Because like on the chart here, it's, it's very clear. Your extra starting resources: one Solari, one Spice. That's why I took it. But let me read. Let me read the setup to make sure we're we're on the same page here. 
So select the difficulty from the chart on the right, choose two leaders, yada yada. Uh, for each rival, choose a color, place one of their cubes on each of the bottom spaces of each influence track, did that. Uh, put the number of troops in their garrison for your chosen difficulty. Our difficulty, we're doing novice, so it's zero starting troops. Uh, place two of their agents in their supply and insert the sword masters for both rivals into, and, and this is why they put it in italics uh, and, and, and try to make it very clear there that it's into, like they know it's weird. Uh, and you're going to reread that again and be like, what? Uh, by putting exactly the number of cards on top, we just did that. Remove that from the house hall god deck. We don't need to do that because of the app. And if your difficulty calls for it, place the five Solari token on the Mentat space. It means for this game, this board space costs five Solari instead of two. You and your rivals each start with one water plus the extra resources indicated for your chosen difficulty. So rival starting resources, uh, the only thing they would ever gain is possibly intrigue cards for their rival starting resources uh, if we played at a higher difficulty. So in nowhere on here, it tells me that the AI should ever get Solarian Spice to start. So just to be clear on that, I'm pretty sure, unless there's a reprinting or an errata uh, in the FAQ or something that I, I didn't notice, but I read that a few days ago, so I could be wrong. Oh, you, no, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I see what you think. Uh, I, I think that's wrong also. You're saying because, hold on. So you're saying because the beast uh, has this little ability here, you start the game with these resources. Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. I, th I think you ignore the, the left side. Uh... Yeah, I, I thought I thought you ignore their their passive ability, but I could be wrong. Because, like, here it says they use their signet ability. Um, but maybe after each of the first player turns, nope. Hmm. Yeah, I thought you ignore the left side, and you ignore the right side when you're playing two-player, but you, you do the right side when you're playing solo. I'm trying to remember. If you know where it says that, uh, let me know. I also have the FAQ here. Maybe it's in here. But I want to know, because I, I want to play it right, and if anyone's watching this in the future, I would love for us all to be playing the correct way. And then maybe someone can learn that that we're playing it wrong. Mm, that's it. Uh, I have a feeling it's in here, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it was written at the beginning of the gray part set up for rivals. Okay, select a difficulty level from the chart to the right. Choose two leaders, one for each rival. During the game, these rivals will use only the signet ability on their leaders. Oh, ignoring the ability on the left. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. Okay, I knew I read that somewhere. I, was, I didn't think to go there. I was, I was scanning everywhere else. Uh, around it. I was, I was thinking it might be up here. Uh, but yeah, okay, we're clear. We're good, we're good. I knew I, I wasn't crazy. I mean, I'm crazy, but uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, just the right side is used. So there's a correction for you. Uh, who was it was saying that? 
Oh, Wild Inferno. Yeah, okay. We got you. We got you. So there you go. Now your future games will be played correctly. It's all good. We, we learn. We learn now. Like, you just learned from that, so we got something out of that. That's great. And, you know, if I, I would suck if I was playing it wrong, and then people watch this later to, like, learn, and then they start playing it wrong, too. So at least we squashed that and maybe helped some other people out, too, in the future. So that's great. And again, if you're watching this in the future, you notice anything we goof up or anything that, you know, myself or the chat gets wrong, which happens, uh, you'd, you'd be surprised. Uh, just drop it down in the comments below, timestamp it if you can, uh, because myself and I know others do the same. They'll watch a playthrough to kind of test their knowledge of the rule book or their understanding of the game. And sometimes things might happen in a stream or a playthrough that you realize, wait, is that how it works? And if you can go down in the comments and you see you guys commenting saying this was correct or this was wrong, feel free to throw that down there. It helps other people more than you know, more than you know. So do not, do not feel bad calling out something we did wrong or, or whatever. It helps us all learn to get better at some of these more complex games. This one's not that bad, but there's some, the rule book leaves a little to be desired, but uh, it's still fine. It's not that complex. So yeah. All right. So no resources for you, beast. Uh, and Earl... Yeah, so we ignore the left side. So we just got to remember, uh, if they ever see their Signet ability, Earl will gain a Spice, and the Beast will gain a Grey Cube or two Grey Cubes if he has at least one Faction Alliance token. Okay, so we got to remember that going forward. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess they're funny. <laughs> ah. Hey Brian, uh, don't worry, we haven't really got started yet. We've just gone through setup and stuff. Uh, yeah, Adam, we're playing novice. We're playing novice. This is only my second time playing solo. We're just trying to show how the solo works. Uh, we were going to switch up the character, but some have requested in chat that we just play the standard first game because there might be some out there struggling to see how it works or to make sure we're all playing the same. It will treat this as more of like a learning kind of first time uh, solo playthrough helper kind of video. We'll play this in the future. And we'll try to get more crazy with it and play some uh, more strategic factions, try to crush the AI even harder. Hopefully we beat them today, but we'll see. Maybe we lose horribly. It'll be all good, but feel free to help out. Feel free to play along and uh, let's have some fun with it. Okay. Uh, so, where is, okay, so, uh, and yes, I still need the reference card, uh, cause I don't want to miss anything and I still feel like I struggle. All I like to see is like this little flow, but I love the way this is on the back of every, uh, house leader sheet here. So you can just grab it, throw and every player, even a four player game, all have one because there's eight characters in the game. But yeah, I just always forget like the order of all this stuff. I, I always need to make sure like, and, and I do all the, the reveal stuff properly. But uh, yeah, I do like it a lot. It's very, very helpful. Okay, uh, so we're gonna reveal a conflict. All right, so this one could go up on an influence track, get some Solari. So is is that where we're going today? I don't know. Let's count my cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure I don't accidentally put an extra one in there. Uh, oh man. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So we're not first player. Uh, this guy's first player. And because of that, let's get the app up here. We're gonna try. Oh, the solo thing would have helped us set up too. So we're going to choose our role, and we're playing with Paul, this guy here. Who are your two rivals? Uh, so it's the Beast. Here, we can show you. There we go. Uh, the Beast and Earl. Okay, our difficulty, we're playing on Mercenary. Uh, you start with three troops in your garrison, which I did already. And our starting resources... Oh, it's right here. This is this helps us. This would have solved our argument also. <laughs> uh, it's corrected right here in the app. It tells you. That's pretty cool. Okay. 
Uh, set up. Your third agent, Swordmaster, is set aside. You'll need to send an agent to the Swordmaster space to acquire it. Your rival, Swordmaster, should be placed underneath the top five cards of the conflict deck. When you reveal the conflict card above your rival's Swordmasters, your rivals earn them. First player marker. Determine a seating order for your rivals. Give them the first player marker to your rival on the left. They will take the first turn of the game. You're ready to begin. Begin! So we're going to draw the first card. And Karthag. And, and again, on the right it tells you the rules text. But if you're a pro and you want it to just look cooler on your device, you can always just do this. <laughs> Might help other people actually see them further around the table if everyone's working off of the same app if you're playing the two-player variant. But uh, we'll keep it up there. All right, so what this tells me, he's going to take a little worker, go to Carthag. Uh, it is gets him a cube into the combat. Uh, because it's a combat space, he would move uh, two up to two from his garrison. He has none there. He'll gain an intrigue card. So, like, they even simulated, like, the churn, a.k.a. the the grabbing of intrigue cards to, to, so you never know what's truly left in the deck. Uh, that was done correctly. But, again, the churning of the market was, like, a huge miss. Uh, so he's going to get one Intrigue card. Remember, when he gets up to three Intrigue cards, he'll discard him right away, and he'll gain a victory point. Uh, what else do we need to do there? I think that's... Oh, sorry. He doesn't uh, do what's on the space, duh. Uh, he just does what's on the card in the app. I'm being silly. Uh, yeah, sometimes they do gain Intrigue cards, though. Just FYI. But it'll be off of these, I think. Um, but yeah, now they do gain Intrigue cards, but not right now. Not right now. They ignore what's on the space. Ignore what's on the space. So he's just, according to the app, he's getting a cube, putting in the conflict, and he'll move up to two from his garrison. But he doesn't have any. So that's it. Uh, then we go to Earl next. We'll draw another card. And he wants to go to Carthag also, but it is taken. So in that case, you just draw a new card. Nice and straightforward. Arakeen. So he'll go to Arakeen. Combat space again. He is getting a cube. But see the way it's different here? On the board, he'll draw a card. But we don't do that. And when a player goes there, they draw a card. Instead, he's going to do a Signet ability, uh, according to the AI here. So first, he's going to recruit a troop to the combat. Because it is a combat space. He has none to move in from his garrison. Um, and then he'll activate his rival ability, which gains him a spice. And when he gets to seven spice, he can spend them to get a victory point. Okay, we're all starting at zero down here. All starting at zero. Okay, uh, Wild Inferno, you're correct. Uh, since my ability is I can always look at the top card of my deck anytime, and I will forget it. Uh, the reason why I don't want to do it, uh, I might accidentally grab the card and think I dropped it, or, or it should be in my hand, or something silly. I'm bad like that, especially when I'm interacting with chat and I'm forgetting what I'm doing and where I am. I'm just going to leave a face down. If I forget to look at it, no big deal. No big deal. Because what I'll want to do is, the more important time for me to look at it is when I look at my hand and go, Oh, I don't have the card I need to go to the space I want. Hmm, maybe I'll look at this and maybe I have my signet ability or I can go somewhere to draw me cards instead. Uh, that's when I'll do it, but I don't need to look at it all the time. I, I, I don't really care. But yeah, that is a good good idea uh, for players that are playing with Paul to always have it revealed. Just makes sense, right? Who aren't as scatterbrained as I am. Uh, all right. Uh, it's our turn. Hmm. Okay. So let's play along here. So I got this one, the trash card that goes to any of the four faction spaces I want. Uh, I got the Dune the Desert Planet, so I can go to one of these three locations or one of these two locations up here. I have, well, I have two of those, I have two of those. Or I can save it to the end and we get some money. Like, that's the one thing I don't do in this game enough, and I started doing it yesterday late in the game, is saving uh, things from the reveal ability and maybe taking kind of like a, a less a less good turn on the board. And that's, I think, part of the balance of the game and the fun is the multi-use cards. And I always talk about that in games. I love multi-use cards where it's those decision points. I love games that have tons of decision points and it feels like your choices matter. Uh, and this game has that. So I choose to use a card to put a worker out, but then I lose what the bonus is on the bottom of that card and maybe lose some buying power, some fighting power at later in the turn. So sometimes I feel like it's the decision even at the start of the turn is this a turn we focus on trying to grab a card? Is this a turn where we focus on trying to win the combat? Is this a turn where we need to go to specific places to set up a future turn? Uh, I love that decision in the game. And you can sit here all day 
trying to figure that out, uh, but we're not going to do that because uh, you can get heavy analysis paralysis, I think, in this game too. Lots of options, lots of choices. Uh, Darren says, you may have talked about it, but overall, how do you feel about this game? I like it a lot. And again, I know nothing about Dune. I know, but uh, it's still a great game. And you do not need to know the IP. It's another one of those games where it's like a good game design with like an IP slapped on that like you could have slapped on many, many different IPs, but you don't need to know the IP to play the game. It's just straightforward. Like I'm playing Star Realms mixed with like a classic worker placement game with this little like tension of, I don't know what game this idea comes from with a whole like setting up for a combat later. Um, yeah, I don't know what game that's from, but I feel like I've played that kind of stuff in other games before, but this whole like tension of who's committing what to a combat uh, I like that. I, I, this part like really gets me going. I think this game, this part of the game just sets it apart and, and I like it a lot. But yeah, I do like this game very much. It's easy to set up, simple to learn, easy to teach, uh, a good play time to it, lots of strategy, lots of depth it feels. Um, and I see why it's number 74 out of all board games of all time in less than a year after release. Like six months after release, it's in, a top, in the top 100 board games of all time. I see why. It's just like a good package, like good value package. It's not like an overpriced Kickstarter. It's like the money you pay for it, you're getting a great game out of it and lots of hours of play. And you're not paying like $100, $200, $300 to get that, which uh, I think it's, it shows something. Yeah, Adam, I know. I was supposed to read the Dune books. People were commenting and saying that yesterday too. I need to go back and read those books. I did see something uh, online saying those books are kind of hard to read. Uh, in today's day and age where a lot of the futuristic stuff they talk about is like old technology is like the future. Uh, so it's kind of like a little weird that, uh, but other than that, it's supposedly pretty cool. But again, I'm excited for the new movie. I, I, that's the way I think I'm going to experience it first, but I don't know if I have time to read through a bunch of books, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, the first book was the best. Okay. Okay. Bernardo says, just read the first, others are not that good. Oh, okay, if I just got to read one book, that's fine. But in my head, I have to read like a whole cycle, a whole universe of books. That's a, a, a commitment I don't know if I can make. Oh, audiobook is good too. Thank you so much for the tips. Okay, all right. I can do an audiobook too, because I can like listen to that while I edit and stuff too. So that's easier. Reading, I have to like fully disconnect from everything to do it. Um, but audiobook, I can listen to like while I drive and stuff too, which is nice. Two things at once. <laughs> Yogi says, Rob is a hater. Next week he'll be dressed up and his face will be painted. I'm not a hater. I just, this is an IP that just passed me by. I just never got into it. I tried to watch the first movie and couldn't. I, I got like a few minutes in and was like, I can't do this. I can't do this right now. I, there's other stuff I'd rather be doing. It just wasn't pulling me in. So yeah, just read the pop-up book. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right. Thank you for the tips. That's awesome. Cliff Notes. Oh, Brian. <laughs> Cliff Notes got me through a lot of classes in school. <laughs> oh, it's like, damn, I spent all night playing video games. Uh, I need to read the Cliff Notes to prepare for my book report. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know where it was. Oh yeah, our turn. What are we doing? Uh, I also have this card, which obviously can't help me currently, so this is staying for later. So I could have four money. I could get this card as quick as possible before it's possibly gone. Uh, I don't have my signet ring to help me draw cards. I could go to the folded space with this card, and we literally try to get the red alliance token as quick as possible. But then are we going to see other Spacing Guild cards or not, you know? So I, I think, should we try this? I want to try this Guild Ambassador strategy here. I wish I knew if there was more of him in the deck too. And then maybe if we work ourselves up, maybe we can do this one. This one doesn't need an alliance. This one's more like open where you just need Solari, which is kind of easy to get. If you get a bit of spice, you can really get the Solari pumping. Um, so I don't know. Any recommendations? Go Fremen? Hey, Sean. The spice must flow. 
yeah, I'm kind of with you, Wild Inferno. Like, trying to find time to read the books, you just kind of admit it at some point, like, all right, I have all these books I'm supposed to go back and read. I maybe have read one. It takes forever. I'm a slow reader, and uh, my reading comprehension is not the greatest, I'll be honest. I have to, like, reread pages a couple times sometimes for them to sink in. Uh, my mind wanders a lot. Um, and, yeah, the movies, you know, it, it's, yeah, bring them on. Bring them on. Which is why I think I'll sit down and watch the older movie. I'll just, like, force myself to do it um, just to get an idea of what's going on. But, again, the new movie comes out in October, so... Use the money. Go Fremen first to get the three meeple. So if I go Fremen first to get Solari from here, right? You're saying to go like more of the water combat route. So we can use water to get ourselves some um, spice later. And if we're going... To these guys, it'll help us with water and combat, which leads to spice, which could lead to Solari, which could lead to us getting our third worker quick. Second meeple to three spice. You want to go here already and do two water to get three spice this turn? But then we'll be up to four, and that could lead to a lot of Solari. Interesting. Okay, I'll do it. I'll try it. I wouldn't have gone that way, but uh, yeah, we can do it. All right, so we'll play the Seek Allies card, which we trash. I'll show that off to the side. Uh, and we'll use that to go to... I'm assuming we'll go to the Sill Suits, right? Because that is the way we're going to get the second water to go here. Okay, okay. That's interesting. I wouldn't have done that. I would have held off on it a bit. But then the problem is the AI can just go there without spending resources. So normally in like a multiplayer game, I would be not worried about that getting taken as easily because it costs two water to get there. And most likely it would wait a couple turns or at least one turn and have some extra spice. Uh, and then, you know, I could race players there later. But okay, okay, okay. Uh, so we'll go here. Uh, we can then uh, move up to two because it's a combat space. We can put up to two units in the combat. I think we'll do that. I mean, it's not a victory point one, but going up on influence can lead to getting a victory point. We're going to go up one here on this influence. We're going to gain a water from here. And I think that's that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like I like it, Alexander. I, I did, did that wrong yesterday. The first time I played it, I rushed for this meeple, the third meeple. I forgot about it in yesterday's live playthrough. So I like this aggressive style you're talking about trying to get that meeple. I'm all about it. I'm every worker placement game. That's the first thing. I don't care what else is going on. Whatever it takes to get that extra meeple as fast as possible just leaves us so many more action points later in the game. Uh, and to be more flexible. And you can make a few more like mistakes and risky moves and stuff because you have like an extra worker. Okay. Um... All right, so I think that we did everything. Oh, let's look at the top card of our deck so you guys know what it is. Ah, Diplomacy, like that card. I like that card. It's one that lets us go to any any faction space, but we don't have to trash it. So it's like our only way to really do that so far. So that's, that's hiding in there. But again, we have no way to draw cards right now. And I may have gone here, but I don't even have the symbols for it. So we can't. Because then we could have drawn more cards and, and get a little more aggressive here. But I, I like this route. I like this route. Like, the cards can dictate your turn, right? Like, I don't, I'm not able to go to certain spaces. Because I, I just didn't have the cards for it, which is kind of cool. Working with the tools you get. So I, lo I love that idea. I love that idea from card games. So All right. Uh, so we go to this guy. We're going to draw another card. Bold space. All right. He goes up one with these guys here. And that's all. That is all. Uh, and then we draw a card for the next guy. He's going to rally the troops. So he's going to go up here. And that will give him four recruits. And we'll put him in his garrison. Okay. Uh, now it's our turn. And we know what we're doing. We're going to play the Dune the Desert Planet. And this is going to allow us to go to the Great Flat, where we have to spend two water to go there. And we'll get three spice from that place. Okay. And it is a combat space, 
So I could move this last unit in the combat if I want. I only have one point of combat coming, but I'm okay with just the second place on this one. Like getting three is fine. They don't have any more workers to go. They're not going to take any more turns, but they do flip cards from the AI deck to see how many swords they get. And uh, I'll show you the AI deck. Uh, it's in the app right now, but there are some cards with six, four, you know, it's not likely. They're most likely going to probably get two or three swords, I think. But um, they could see a heavy sword card. So it's like, but this isn't for a victory point in theory. It, it could be if we're worried about going up the faction. Like technically I could use this to get a victory point right here by going up another another uh, spot with the Fremen. Um, but yeah, go all in. All right. You guys want me to go all in? I'm going all in. <laughs> Bernardo, I hope in the expansion they're including those churn cards for the House of Gaul deck. That's the number one piece of uh, of content they need in that expansion. <laughs> and then I assume like more conflict cards, some other leaders, more intrigue cards, more cards for this deck. Yeah, they'll just go crazy. It's like so easy to expand this game, I feel. Imagine a two-sided board, like a different board. Or like, you know, an, a board expansion. Like every worker placement game, they come out with expansions, right? They just add extensions to the board. I can see that. Adding a fifth player stuff. Like, yeah, there's so many things that like we've seen done so many times in this game. Uh, I would just see them doing the similar stuff for the expansions. Oh yeah, Fremen. Yeah, I always go for Fremen level 2. I've never played a game where I haven't unlocked this... Uh, this place right here, uh, by being at level two, so you can get water in a combat later. Very good, very good. Okay, um, so I think we got our stuff. I think that's it, right? We went all in. Uh, now these guys don't go, they have no one left. Now it's our reveal turn, right? Uh, where we have a sword. And we have uh, six points there, so seven in the combat. And then we have uh, three money. Three money. Now we could go into the Fremen route here where we can start getting spice and going on their spaces from this. Uh, there's also just getting this card. If we buy this one now, that, that works good with that other Fremen card. So we can buy one of these instead, which is more just open and generic. Um, or we have the option of this card, which I like that it can be trashed, but it can't be trashed by itself. You have to trash it from some other effect. And I don't see another effect right now in play uh, or in my hand or anything. So, or in my deck or in my intrigue cards, none of that stuff yet. So taking this card, it's not the greatest because it does nothing on your turn to get you to spaces. It's just like a, you know, a Solari or a sword at the end of the turn. Yeah, that's one thing I thought this game was missing when I played it the first time. Uh, like other worker placement games I own, there's no space on the board it's for players to grab the first player token. I thought that was strange too, but it, it's clever. It's it's You don't need to have that, but I just thought that was something that wasn't in the game yet. That could be in an expansion. The second... Oh yeah, sorry, this allows you to trash cards, right? Yeah, this allows you to trash cards. You're correct, you're correct. I just like, always use these cards to trash when I see them. But yeah, that's right. We could go to uh, Selective Breeding. Alright, um, I, I don't know what to buy for three. Um, I feel like going this card to possibly... Like, this card I really want. I, I like this, it's flexible. I'm not locked into... Um, I'm not locked into having an alliance. I just need Solari, which there's places that you can get it, right? Um, so, like, if I take this card, it could lead to me getting that card possibly. And at least it has some symbols on the left side. So it's, like, could actually be useful during a turn. 
But I, I like this Fremen Bond one. I'm thinking of just taking the Spice Hunter. Because I, I feel like I, I always play this game and I feel like I lack flexibility of influence symbols. Or, uh, yeah, these, these faction symbols on cards. One and five. Yeah, exactly, with Nail. Yeah, you need lots... With Nail saying in the chat, exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, you need lots of cards with faction icons, otherwise no way to get up on the tracks. Yes. This is why I'm valuing this card. Uh, so I'm going to spend two on this one. I still have one left. We'll draw. Oh, see, I wish this one was there. I would have spent three on this one instead. Uh, but maybe we could just go Fremen-themed, right? And we can use this Fremen bond to go up on that, you know? And get ourselves a couple points off this track. Use these spaces. We'll see. That'll, un that'll unlock this space too. Okay, so with the one left, I'm not going to buy this, I don't think. I'm not a fan of this card, um, which I think is why it costs one. It's not the greatest card. Could be, if you're going the discard route, just get it, pull it up once, throw it away for four Solari. But, yeah. All right, uh, so we'll leave it like that. Uh, we'll pass on using one of our resources and uh, then we'll clean up. And then we go to combat uh, where they're gonna draw cards. So uh, we'll go with the in turn order. Uh, three swords plus two here. So green is at five. And then this guy gets a two. So he's at two plus two is four. 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, Alright. So, combat. We win. So, we're going to get 2 Solari. And any recommendations what faction... We can pick any faction to go up one space. Any any recommendations? Assuming I did all that right. Yeah, Wild Inferno, exactly. This it's, It will blow up my deck because you know what I'll do? I'll get this thinking I'll trash it soon, but then like I won't go to that space or that space will get taken by the AI or something, and then we won't see any trash cards for a while, and then I'll be like super frustrated. <laughs> okay, what's, what's the chat want here? Uh, Brian S. is saying Benny Jesserit. We got With Nail saying Fremen and Emperor. But we only can pick one. And Wild Inferno saying Fremen, get that point. Even though, even though we have this card, like this is what I did the first time I played. I bought too many of the same faction and it made a good engine, but it's just like, you can only go so high up on the track before it's doing nothing for you, right? So it's like, we're already going to see this card a few times in the game. Most likely I'm going to use it for this and until I get to spot four, then I'll be using it for this, but maybe not. Maybe I don't care and I just want to use it for this all the time, which is great. So yeah, I can see that going Fremen. And it also unlocks this space, right? So... <laughs> oh, you're bad, Sakara. <laughs> it's BG. BG. <laughs> All right, so we'll go up. Fremen seems to be the consensus in the chat. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It, it, look, he's peeking around them. I, I, I put them on the board, but look, he, he like doesn't even like that I put him there. He's like leaning around the tokens. So I see that... Uh, Dan Roberts saying, can you put those orange pieces on Paul's face? I feel like he's staring into my soul, so I'll just help you out there, Paul. Oh, see, look, he's still peeking through. Like, he he realized he can look through the little hole there. So we need to kind of, like, you know, put them more interlocking for you. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about ambush. Let's not talk about ambush. Okay, so we'll go up on the Freeman space. We get a victory point. We're in the lead, guys. We're in the lead. Woo! Uh, okay. And we got our Solari, right? Uh, second place is the green. Uh, they're going to take three Solari. And remember, when they get to seven, they can spend them on a victory point. Okay. Uh, then we reset. Here's your pieces back. Mine back. Uh-oh, my garrison's empty. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, then next we play Spice. So we do not play Spice because I have a worker here. We put one here, put one here. So spots are getting more juicy. Uh, definitely not the end of the game. The Mentat's already put away. We're going to recall our stuff. OK. 
Okay. Um, and then we pass the first player token. So now Earl. My name is Earl. He's the first player. All right. Uh, so let's draw a card for, or first let's draw a conflict card. Oh man, more faction stuff. Oh, and intrigue cards. Yeah. The only problem is I don't, I don't know this turn if we'll be able to get there, but we'll see. If I could just get an intrigue and a spice, I'd be happy. Okay. Uh, we're going to draw five cards. Okay. So we got our signet ring, of course. We haven't seen that. We got the dagger, reconnaissance, another convincing argument, and the diplomacy that we knew about. Okay. And we do not just, we do not shuffle our deck in until we go to draw. Uh, and the reveal does not make the deck cycle. So right now without a deck, I'm, my ability is useless. I have nothing to look at and it does not force it to cycle. Uh, I'm pretty sure all games kind of work that way. It usually has to draw, but um, okay. Uh, so we're gonna draw a card. Hardy Warriors. Okay, and this guy is gonna gain one with the Fremen. He is gonna re recruit two into the conflict, and then he'll move two in, because it's a combat space. Boom. Okay, now it's my turn. Edward, that's a strategy that I took before. Uh, the second time I played the game, I, I took that strategy of ignoring all the conflict cards until it got to like the level four, right? Um, where it was like this, the two point ones and stuff, because then if you focus really hard on them and you kind of lock them all in, uh, you could possibly get like six points from those cards, uh, which is pretty crazy. So all you need is a few victory points before that, and you're good. Okay, uh, so our turn, we got to sell our spice, right? We want to do that before that Spock is taken. I don't know if the AI takes it, but we're going to do it with our signet ring, right? It's the only one we have with the yellow symbol on it. So let's do it. So we'll go there. We're going to take four spice away, and Paul's going to stare into Dan Roberts' soul. Uh, so we spend a four. We're going to take ten. I'm assuming we spend all four, right? Is that a common thing? Do you guys always spend all your spice you have here? Or is there like a strategy to it on like spending a little less because you get Solari other ways in the game just kind of just by it happening? Unless you're going like a heavy Solari thing. But like, I assume I take all ten and get rid of all my spice. Even though the spice is very nice. Oh, uh, I'm assuming we just do it all. I'm just curious what other people's thoughts are. I always looked at this as like, hmm, this is like a cool little little option because you can go from spending two spice for six Solari all the way up to five for 12. But you have like three for eight and four for 10. I like that there's an option for that. Spice must flow. Does that mean I must spend it? Is that what that means? Yeah, but here's the thing with Nail. I thought that too. And the first time I played, I went here when I got up to five spice. I went there, got 12 Solari. By the end of the game, I had so much Solari that was doing nothing for me. I just couldn't even spend it if I wanted to. Because um, a lot of Shadow card or Emperor cards came up. And I was just getting Solari from going on these spaces, trying to race up that track and, and stuff. And uh, it was just overwhelming and I had no way to really use it up. So I feel like there's a balance. I feel like there's a strategy to this, using less spice there. Especially if your strategy is to use spice on other things. And maybe you're struggling to get spice going in the game because the other players are stealing the spots. Uh, including the AI. Spice must flow. It's a, I know it's from the movie. Everyone keeps saying it in the chat all the time. <laughs> Five spice, yum. Solari is the weakest currency. Eggs, that's my point. That's where I'm getting at. Spice must be good, used for factions. Good to keep one to save for later for your faction actions. Also, you could pull intrigue cards and stuff too, right? That could uh, need spice to play for little abilities. If you don't have any, then those cards are pretty much useless. I did see that. All right. So I'm, I'm going to take it all. I'm, I'm going to take it all. But, uh, I don't know, maybe not. But then again, if I'm going this route here, do we? Hmm, I don't know. Hmm, that's tough. But yeah, spice is a good resource. Hmm, okay, I'll do it all. Oh, Edward saying only consider less spice sold late in game if you have the intrigue cards that need spice. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so uh, we got our Solari. We also trigger our Signet ability to draw a card, which will shuffle up our deck. All right, we got our Spice Hunter card. 
Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking of... Oh, I don't have the cards for it. Mm, that's okay. All right. Never mind. Okay. Uh, I think we did all of our stuff. Oh, we can look at the top card of our deck. It's just the Dune the Desert Planet. Okay. Uh, all right. So now to the beast. Selective breeding. He'll go here. He'll gain one with the purple. Okay. And the Earl is going to go. Carthag. Okay. And he will recruit one to the conflict and move two in. Yeah. So I kind of guess this one, if he clears out all his tokens I'll, I'll, on this one, that's fine, right? Um, but what I like doing is at least getting something in there to get like the second place prize for like one unit. Sometimes you get lucky and I feel like that's worth it, but I wouldn't shape my whole turn around it though. Uh, okay. Our turn again. So we're going to go get this space, which we need to use the dagger for. Oh, and for the tiebreakers. Yeah, that's, that's makes sense. Edward, that makes sense. Good tips. Good tips. All right. Uh, so we're going to go get our extra worker. We're going to spend eight Solari. And this will unlock our third worker. And if I had another uh, green symbol, I would love to go there and grab this guy too. But uh, so we could use some of these, uh, these cards here. I feel bad not using this, these symbols here. And we're not going to get the Fremen Bond on this one. Um, we could use one of the symbols, but I mean, like, I want to use both. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, now we'll go with the AI. Because they still have... This guy still has one. Let's go on to Highliner. He'll gain one in the red. He gets a victory point. Okay. And he's going to gain three to the Conflict. And he has none in his garrison. Interesting. Okay, this guy doesn't have any agents left, so he's good, right? And then it's back around to us with our final worker. Yeah, Michael. Michael's got a good point. So Michael in the chat saying, getting the high council, the extra two money is more important than the third worker. I think it depends which way you're playing. Because if there is cards in here that don't work good or to your strategy or, you know, just stuff you don't care about, that's not going to work to how you're getting victory points. But in this case, seeing victory points sitting here in the row, I feel like I want to go that route. And I normally, every game, I usually get the high council seat before I get my third worker. But uh, I, I can see it either way. But in theory, getting another worker could lead to us getting more Solari and making it easier to get to the high council. Um, to get that done. So it just depends what strategy you're going with, but I, I don't know. Depends. Because that third worker can get more resources from here every single turn, but a single, like getting the extra two money might lead to a couple better cards in your deck, but that means you're going the deck, the card buying route, and how often are you going to actually see those cards when you need them? Uh, versus the worker, you can like kind of like always have somewhere for it to go. I don't know. But it, I mean, that, that's a good debate. That That could go either way, right? And third worker, oh, that's a good point. Third worker means you have less cards in hand to buy cards. That is true. If you're using all three workers, which you should, you'll have less cards at the end of the turn. That's correct. That is correct. Hmm, interesting. Unless you're using that worker to uh, draw you cards and stuff from the board. Or go here and just trash cards. And you, I mean, that third worker can get you more cards and can make up for itself, right? And get you additional resources on top of that. So we could... I'm sure that's a good debate we could have on like which one's better, but I think I think there's a case for both ways. Maybe progress on the Emperor track, getting some Solari from there. Hmm. Hmm. Emperor track, okay. 
All right, so we'll play Diplomacy. We're going to go to the Emperor track. And we get two Solari. We go up one on the track. And that will that will help us there, right? Um, yeah, okay. And then they're done. So it comes back around to me for a reveal turn. And here's what we have revealed. So we have four money right now. And one sword. But I have nothing in the combat, so it does not matter with the sword. I do not have a Fremen Bond, because I do not have any other Fremen cards in play. Uh, so we just have four money to spend. Four money. I mean, <laughs> this card is four. But how often am I going to use this green, those green spaces for the rest of the game? Other than to go to the High Council like once. And I might even go to it before I see this card again. But I do like this ability of going up on the track or getting too spice. I, I think that's crazy. It's just this only one symbol. Uh, uh, I mean, if we go for the Mentat a lot, that makes sense, right? I mean, that's the way I would do it. If I, if I, I, I go to the Mentat... I like that space, or I could rally some troops every now and then. And we know we want to go to the High Council. Card one, we want to get the Fremen, the Fremen combos going. Getting the knife. I do love this card. I do love this card. The Intrigue cards, man, after last night's play, seeing all the Intrigue card stuff, man, it makes me want to just draw those too. That's one aspect of the game I've kind of ignored. Uh, we're just playing with Paul because he's the starting character they recommend when you first play solo. So we're treating this as kind of like a, again, it's my only second time playing solo, but we're just trying to play it from a new player point perspective, you know, just seeing, seeing what the solo is, you know, recommended to start out with. So maybe this helps some new players learn in the game. Um, but yeah, the book, the book tells us to play him as the first one. Green equals big garrison for late game, huge armies. Yum, yum, yum. Could work well since your deck is small right now. What could work well? This one? I want to go this one because I think it's flashy. I've, I've never seen victory points on cards in the Imperium deck till today. I, I really want to take this card. I think it's hilarious. It might suck. It might ruin us, <laughs> ruin us later. But I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I, th I think we do it. I do like this card though too. But maybe it'll still be there later. All right. Space travel. Okay, so this helps us. If we can get this card, this helps us with that faction. If we start going spacing guild. I do love this space a lot later in the game. I love that space. I love the spacing guild space. Oh, you have to go for dinner. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Thanks for joining with Nail. I appreciate it. Enjoy your dinner. Uh, all right. So we'll go with that one. Throw in our discard. We clean up. We don't need to set our combat. Now these guys are going to fight it out. Let's draw for the green. He's going to get two extra swords. So he's up to eight. And the red gets two extra swords. What is he at here? 10, 14, 16? Either way, he crushed. He crushed it. Okay, so the red is going to go up, and we choose the lowest, and we can pick any of these red ones. Um, I, I don't know, I think the Spacing Guild, maybe? I don't know, we'll just go with that. Uh, and then two Intrigue cards for the red. Uh, let's go here. Two Intrigue cards, and then one Intrigue card, and a Spice for the green. Now the thing in Solo is if you can like uh, just troll the AI a little bit here and at least win one of the prizes, that just means the, they're getting less resources and it'll stop them from getting victory points. That's the way I played the first time, where I was trying to contest here almost every round a little bit, just so I could steal one reward. But if you're letting both AI players have all the rewards, 
That's how they get victory points is by collecting resources mainly, right? Uh, so that's how, that's how you can make it the game a little tough, I think. I think there's a strategy there in like trying to mess with the AI back. Um, but yeah. Uh, do I? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I thought about that, but okay, okay. Benny Jesserit? Yeah, we'll put him up on Benny Jesserit. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, because later on I'll be upset if they're like, we're, I'm fighting them on Space 4 and 5 and stuff for the, the Alliance token, and I realize, wait, why did I move them up on that one before? That's true, that's true. Long-term planning. Long-term planning. Yep. Okay, uh, we'll reset these. Okay, uh, we're placing Spice. All right, uh, check for endgame, obviously not. Mentat's already there. Let's collect our workers. Pass the first player token. Okay, um, new round. Man, no victory points yet in the conflict deck. I don't think I've ever seen this before happen like this. More spice and intrigue cards. Okay, uh, we draw five cards. Okay, we have to shuffle because we only have four. Top card on the deck is diplomacy again. All right. Uh, I feel like this is a junk hand, but uh, there is six resources hiding in here. Can we get the high council seat this turn? That's really what I want to do. Yes, we can off the dagger. And then maybe we go for some spice with uh, the yellows here. I don't know. Well, it's like looking very limited right now. I don't have my signet ability to draw cards. I don't. I can't go down these spaces to draw cards off of the purple. I have no faction cards. What is this? Junk. Uh, the AI will get an extra worker at the start of turn five. When we flip the fifth card off, you'll see an upside down card I put in here. Uh, and that's when we'll give them these two workers. They don't go to this space, I just put those there. Because I didn't want to keep them near the board, I might forget. I want to make sure that they're away from their stuff. So visually, we know they're not, they don't control those. Uh, I also like putting them sideways so I don't accidentally collect them at the end of the turn when I'm grabbing all the ones that are standing up. That's uh, something I do to help myself. Um, all right. Now, uh, we're first. Yeah, start of fifth turn. It's when you flip that fifth card, then you would give the tokens. Okay. Uh, let's play our dagger, I guess. Go to the high council. Or I don't know if the AI takes that spot ever. I don't think they do. So maybe I should go get spice first, but I don't know. I wish I had a way to get some water. Because then I would like to get like some better spice, but that's okay. Yellow first play. Yeah, no troops here looks weird. I know, I agree. It's weird. Yellow first play. Okay, so we'll go to which... We can only go to this space, right? Or we can go here to get three Solari. I, I don't see why. I feel like the three spice is where it's at, right? So spice is, where, spice is nice. Although... Although... Could I argue that maybe, maybe a play, and just hear me out, it's probably wrong, and you guys can tell me why. Uh, using this, yes, okay, Wild Inferno just said it, okay, I was thinking this. Uh, going here to get this to draw into Diplomacy, which we know is there because of our ability. And this could let us get into water, which could then let us get a little more spice with our yellow cards. Or, or, I also thought... We could go to this space, and if I think that this is that important, which I don't feel like it is, unless that intrigue card says 
Uh, there was one I saw before was spend Solari for a victory point. Uh, it's in there. <laughs> uh, we could go to here just to rally troops, to get some troops here, even planning for the future. And then when we go to one of the yellow spaces, we actually are in a combat space so we can move some troops in. So to make, make this, this play a little richer, I, I, you know, I'd rather get water or some troops or both. We could maybe, I don't know. I don't know if we can, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to go for the Mentat. I, I like that wild infernal's recommendation, which is what I was thinking. I was like, wait, I can get more cards. Yes. I wish we could draw into our signet card, but we know it's not there. Uh, so let's go dagger. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, okay, so spending two Solari, taking the Mentat, drawing a card, which we know it's Diplomacy, um, and that's that. Hopefully the AI doesn't take the spots we want to go to, but uh, I think we have this one for a backup for water, if we can get there. No, we can't. We can't go there. Hopefully the AI doesn't take this spot, but we'll see. Uh, so it's the green. Hall of Oratory. He's going to put one into his garrison, and the red player wants to go the same place, but it can't. Oh, son of a... Okay. <laughs> so the, the red gets a victory point, and it's going to deploy... Uh, no, he has nothing in his garrison. Hey, Joost. Joost. Uh, hey, Rob, game looks good. What is the screen in the top right? Is the game app driven? Not by default, no. But they do offer a companion app to just uh, replace the uh, physical AI deck. And it just kind of explains what the symbols are on the card and stuff. So we're just using that. And it'll shuffle it for us and everything. Just kind of saves a little bit of time. Um, you know, so you don't have to shuffle and draw. And we're playing with a version of the app that has um, an added feature that the deck doesn't have is the ability to possibly churn cards from the market row. So the game is not app driven. This is just a companion app helping you streamline the AI and solo and two player and stuff. That's all. But uh, you can pretend like it's not there. <laughs> if you don't like apps with your games, you do not need to use it. Uh, okay. Our next card in the deck is this one. Our next card in the deck is this one. Which, if we could get this card, getting our High Council seat this turn is possible. But, is there a place we can go to draw cards? I think if we get Spice, then if we can go here, we could trash and draw cards, which could draw into the ability with our last worker... Uh, to then go and get our high council seat, and also we can fire off this ability. I think. I, I may have miscounted that there, but I want to try that. Okay, our turn. So let's try that, no? Since we can't go here for water, we can't go here for water, because we don't have that symbol. I feel like we go here for spice, then we go here for card draw, and then that will lead us to go um, here for high council seat slash bumping up there. I know, the AI is too smart. They got me. All right. They knew what I was doing. I shouldn't talk out loud because I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys what I want to do, but the AI is always listening, uh, and they will try to take the spaces I want. So hopefully uh, we can outsmart them. Maybe I'll just say the wrong spaces and then, then they'll take the wrong spots. Okay. So let's use our Mentat. We're going to go, whoops, we're going to go here. Sorry, we didn't get the water. Uh, we're going to take three spice. Okay. Uh, this is a combat space, but again, we don't have anything in our garrison to move in. So whatever, man. All right. AI. Um, green. Akarin, or Akarin, 
Arakin, Arakin. All right, he's going to recruit one to the combat. He's going to pull those in because it's a combat spot. And he gets a Signa ability, which he gets another cube, and he doesn't have a faction alliance, so he'll throw another cube into the combat. Okay. Uh, red. Tries to go the same space, but cannot. So we draw a new card. Harvesting Spice. So it says on here, send an agent to the space with the most bonus spice or total spice if tied. So the most bonus spice is Hagabasin Basin or whatever. Uh, so technically they're tied for spice. Or no, it's tied for bonus spice. Yeah, it's bonus spice first. And there's no tie in bonus spice. So he's going to go to here. And then he's going to get four. So we'll just give him a five. Boom. Okay. So we cleared that out. Uh, and he doesn't have anything in his garrison to move in. Because it is a combat space. So nothing will happen. Arakin. The app must have the mic working. Yeah, using the uh, Android advertising uh, Google, Google method of listening to what you say. And then tweaking your advertisements. Oh, wrong character. Oh, he has nothing. Oh, what did I do? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yep, sorry. The spice that way, right? That's what I messed up? I think we fixed it. Yeah. I gave the spice the wrong character, but I, mo I put the right meeple in, right? It is the red guy's turn, right? Yeah, yeah. And the red still has no garrison meeples or anything. So, yeah, I think we got that fixed now. Thank you for that. Yeah, I gave the spice to the wrong guy here. Gave the spice to the wrong guy. Okay, um, back to our turn. Still have two workers left. Um, okay, what were we doing? We were going to try to draw into cards. And the only way I see that we can draw cards, I have yellow, but again, there this yellow space is, don't draw me cards, I can't even go to this one. Um, and I, ha I can go to any faction space, but this is the only one I see that draws cards, so that's what I want to do. So we're going to go to purple, spend two spice, we get to trash a card from our hand, discard pile, or in play. Any recommendations? I'm thinking the dagger, or a convincing argument, because it doesn't help us during the turn until the end for money. And I feel it's just like a restrictive card, but again, we could buy some crazy card with it. Dagger? Yeah, that's where I'm going. Because I, I already added another card with the green symbol to my deck. So it kind of keeps it a little balanced. But I am losing a sword. But I feel like the swords aren't really that great. You need to be getting units in. Uh, or having intrigue cards to win combats. Not so much the holding swords for the end of the turn. I, yeah, daggers are the worst. That's what I feel too. That's what I feel too. That was just my impression so far. I'm glad uh, others are saying the same. Okay, so we'll get that out of there. Whoops, I just picked up my cards. I think it's only... Those two that are left. So I have these in my hand still. Uh, so the dagger. Oh, but hold on. We wanted to use the dagger to get the high council seat, right? That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to trash a convincing argument. I'm going to trash a convincing argument. Uh, because we want to still use the dagger on this turn. And then that will lead us to getting money every turn. So I feel a little okay getting rid of a straight money card. And I kind of want to grab this card eventually too, if possible. Uh, which could lead to get more money and is a better card. So yeah, that's my theory on that. Okay, uh, I think it's my turn. Oh, dagger was in my discard? Oh, it was! You're right, you're right, you're right. You're right, you're right. Okay, you're right. I see what I did. Yeah, yeah, I messed up, I messed up. Yeah, I got confused. So yeah, daggers in the discard. We're okay with that. We're still drawing. That's what it was. Yes, sorry. Wow. Getting confused. All right. So we drew, we trashed the dagger. That's all good. And then we're going to draw. This is what we're looking for. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. All right. So now we get these two cards. And the top card on our deck is the Spice Hunter. Okay. 
so hmm. now we have options. I still think I do the spacing guild card to help us go up on the red track. Okay. So we'll go to the high council. We get to put our token. It's a once per game thing. Put our token here. We permanently have two extra money every round. Uh, I got to spend five Solari to do so. Uh, then I can go up one on red or get two spice. I'm going to go up one in red. Because we're trying to work our way up to getting an alliance with red. That's what we hope. We hope that's what's going to happen. Uh, the AI doesn't have any um, any workers left. So that's why I skipped them. Is that okay? Oh, thank you. I think, I, did I move the wrong token? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to move it up when I went there. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. So we triggered that off. Um, got our high council seat. We got this. I think that's okay. Uh, now we're going to do a reveal turn. Where we have, look at this. We have six from our cards. And we have two from here. We have eight points. Where's that eight point card now? And why don't we have one extra for this nine point card that gets us the victory point? Hmm. I, I kind of, oh man. So we could grab this juicy, juicy card right here. Which could lead to a victory point later. I can see us having six Solari at some point when we have this card and we just hold it for the victory point. And it gets us Solari in the meantime and helps us go to these spaces, which also gets us Solari. So kind of just like the card works like with itself. That's an amazing card, I think. Or I could go the route of taking like, you know, buying one of these cards and seeing what happens. But then this locks me out of buying that six cost card. And we can just get these cheaper cards, which this one I kind of want because I want to go up on that track. But the Space and Guild card costs three. I wish it was a two. I wish it was a two. I'd buy this then buy that. Um, but hopefully that's still there on a turn when we have less money. Yeah, I want opulence. I, I want it. I want it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Because we may not get six money again. Uh, or eight money. This this case, right? It's, it's going to be hard to grab later and it may disappear. I like this card. I want to try this card. We still have two left. So we're going to replace. And we've got a Benny Jesserit card here that uh, says you trash a card. And if you have another Benny Jesserit card in play, you get two spice. I like these cards where like bonuses for faction like you know like really really focusing on a single faction's cards and stuff i i love that about deck building games i, I always like that the synergies <laughs> yeah okay uh so we have two left the only thing we can buy are these again i don't like this one cost card so like i i don't want this in my deck i don't think unless we were trashing more cards and i could trash some of the starter cards uh, so I think I'm going to pass on spending the extra two. And just let it float. Yeah, I like my other cards. I want to see them more often. So it has to be a really good card to get in my deck, I think. Okay, uh, so we will clean up. Uh, we don't have to set ourselves for combat. Um, we're going to draw a card for the green guy. He's the only guy in combat. Uh, he's going to have so much combat. Either way, he wins. He's uncontested. So he'll get an Intrigue card. Uh, it's his second. And then he'll get three Spice. Okay. It's empty again. Crazy. Okay. Um, return the Mint at. Clean up our guys. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. Um, first player token. Mm, okay. Uh, conflict card. 
All right, the winner can get the Mentat at the start of the round, assuming it's in the space still. I, I think if it's not in the space, you can't get it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think I think I looked this up, and it only only if it's in the space still on the board. So if I steal it, I don't think the AI will grab it. Pretty sure. New subscriber. Zach, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so that's a conflict card. Let's draw cards. We only have three left. Let's shuffle the shuffle. <laughs> yes, Brian, that is correct. <laughs> Drink. Okay. Uh, first player is a green. We're gonna. He's gonna go to secrets. He's got a secret to tell. Goes up one in the purple, which gives green a victory point. Oh no, he's in the lead. Now we go for red. Oh, here's the churn card. So we're gonna trash cards. Uh, crash trash cards two and four. Good thing we bought that six cost card. It would not be there still, it would be discarded. Uh, so this is the only card, only exists in the uh, Direwolf Game Room app, not the companion app for the game. So you have to get the Direwolf Game Room app to even see this card. This card should exist physically in the game, there should be cards like this. Uh, but yeah, so this Imperium Churn card, I love this idea. Um, that it exists at least somehow. So we're gonna churn. Oh, space travel's gone, though. Space travel's gone, unfortunately. But maybe we'll see something better. Okay, so these are these are trashed. We'll draw new ones. Power play. Look at this card. Yes, I've had this one before. This one's very good. I used it near the end of the game. I bought it one time, and it just got me, like, up these tracks really fast. Because you can gain two on, on the, the space you go to with whichever faction. You get to go up on their, um, on their uh, track twice. So this could lead to great points. And it can help us with the other card, getting up the red track, you know? Uh, that We want that card. We want that card a lot. I like it a lot. Goes with our strategy, I think. And then another Benny Jesserit card here. Okay, not bad for three, I think. Okay. But again, we want that five cost card. Uh, okay, so we're gonna draw a new card for the AI. He's gonna rally troops which will put four into his garrison only. It's not a combat space. All right, back around, or I mean, our turn for the first time. So here's our cards we have in hand. Signet card, dagger, spice hunter. We have opulescence showed up already, and we got a dune the desert planet, and our top card, based on our character ability, is for drawing uh, a reconnaissance. Okay. Uh, so how are we doing this here? We have zero Solari, so... Hmm. We, there's no point in holding this till the end of the turn. So we could use it to help get some Solari going. That's, I think, something we need to do this round. Hmm. What are we looking to do? The only factions we really can work with this turn... Uh, and go to their spaces are the blue and the black, I guess it is. Yeah, black up at the top, gray. Um, oh, yes, I did uh, I did skip the spice. Shoot. Uh, but I can fix that easy. We can just rewind the stream. Yeah, I am, I am following this card. I, I just skipped a, a space, but yes. <laughs> I have it right beside me. I'm looking at it, and I, I skipped that box. Again. Did anyone even go there? Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's just a spice here, right? Just a spice there. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> I know I was trying to pick up the pace a little bit. I feel like we're going so slow, but I'm enjoying my time here. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, put a marker on the turn steps on the board. Oh, right here. Oh yeah, I never even looked at that. I've never ever like even thought to use that. I just love this. This I think is so good. But yeah, if you're, I could skip this just as bad. But yeah, using a marker is cool. All right, good tip. Good tip. All right. So what are we doing though? What are we doing on our turn here? Do we want that mentat. I think we grab. I think we grab uh, a space along the side before it gets taken. So what is hot here? We could try to go to the Fremen space here to get a water and then go to this one, eventually get another water and try to get this five spice before the AI jacks it. Maybe, maybe we could try to do that. And then we could build up to get a whole bunch of Solari to try to fire off this card later or just going to this space uh, could get us three plus two Solari. Uh, so five. But again, that's still one short for using this card later. And we will spend some for other turns. Um, we could. Um, hmm. I like the idea of going for the spice space, but I, th I think it'll disappear before we get there. Like that's too many steps. And our top card on our deck is this one, if that changes anything. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What are we working for this turn? I feel like we just go to the to the Emperor space well we can. And then if we get to go to the Fremen space, we do, but I feel like just doing it one turn quicker, I don't think it'll make a difference, but maybe it does. We can inspect the deck. Yeah, there is still a Harvest Spice card in there. Uh, out of only six cards left. So, I mean, they might not draw into it, but they most likely will by that time. So, yeah, I don't think that's a good play. Because they'll, they'll steal this one. They'll steal that for sure before we get there. We're, we'll be too slow. Okay, so I'm just going to play Opulescence. But, Zach, sometimes they do draw a whole bunch of them early, and then you get a breather on these spaces for a bit, I feel. Um, I've seen it happen before if you get lucky and they don't have many left, but if that shuffle card comes or they're near the end of their deck, then it's like, yeah, it's risky. We need to set up water though for the future to grab a good spice space, I think. Um, so we're just going to go here. We'll go up one on the track that gets us a victory point. We get five total Solari. Okay. Uh, anything else from that? Nope. All right. Let's go to the green. Folded space. Uh, yep. Yeah. Go up one. Okay. Red. Conspire. Okay. He's gaining one on this track. And he's going to recruit two cubes to his garrison. Holy. Okay. Our turn. Uh, I kind of want to grab the Mentat again. But again, that's spinning Solari. But it, do I need that extra action? I don't know. Not right now, I don't think. Hmm. Do I get involved here to get some Solari, maybe? I think I could have done it this turn. Um, no, that's fine. Um, so Bernardo's saying, one thing I gathered when I played is that assuming that players will get 1 VP per 1.5 rounds, the game will end somewhere between 15 to 18 rounds. That means you will see each card. What? How is the game going that many rounds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How does the game go longer than ten rounds when there's only ten conflict cards? Or am I missing something? You just blew my mind. Or do you mean turns? They get fifteen to eighteen turns?
Yeah, I do get two cards, so I could dig down, but like, why do I need those two cards? Am I trying to buy... I need to buy this five-cost card. That's a plan, right? I technically have enough in hand to buy it. I have three here plus that. But then I'm going to spend two of these cards. So maybe I just do the card draw, lean into my ability. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just do that. Mentat. Spending two. Gaining three. Or spending five, gaining three back. Uh, we'll get the Mentat. And we'll draw two. <laughs> okay, we got more money. We knew one of them was. And the top card of our deck is more money. <laughs> and I think we did all that. Okay, AI. Uh, have no workers. Back to us. Yeah, so they didn't take the spice. They didn't take the spice this turn. Or this round. Damn it! I should have went with my gut. <laughs> I should have went with my gut. I could have got it. I could have got all the spice. But we know next round they're going to grab it right away. So can I still line it up and get water right now? Because uh, we'll only have one AI go before us next round, right? Hmm. Because we can go here. And then we can go here. Or, or sorry, here. There's nobody in the combat, so we can win that, right? Oh, I shouldn't have taken the Mentat because uh, we could have just get him from combat, right? Uh, our money in hand now is... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, possible. Not the 9 we need for victory point, so I think we're okay to spend some. Because even... we would still have like 6... Even if I still do both turns. Alright. Uh, let's get the Fremen bonus, I think, here. Or f We'll go to the Sil Suits. We go up one here. Or, actually, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Maybe I can go get us some troops first. No, that spot's taken. Uh, the only ones that I can get guys in my garrison, no, there's not really anything, right? No. Yeah, so I think we just do that, right? Go up one, gain a water. Yeah, because we have nothing in our garrison, it's crazy. Need five or six for power, uh, oh, five, 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 five. Yeah, we're just, we just need five for this, we just need five for this. But I want this card. I want that card. And I want it now. Okay. Uh, and then our last agent turn, we said, maybe we go here, right? Reconnaissance. Because we have more than two influence here. We go there. We get to put one of these guys in the combat. We get another water. And we're setting ourselves up to maybe, if we get lucky, where we can grab that spice. It, it probably is going to get taken first, but in the future, we it's still the water gives us an option for getting better spice, and that could lead into our plays of using spice to get points or spending it for Solari to get points off our other card to get victory points. So that's the route. That's the road I'm going. Okay. Uh, done. So I'll look at our top card, yeah. Okay, uh, reveal turn. So we're at three combat, woo! And we have two, three, four, five money. We know we're buying this card. We're gonna clean up. Okay, combat, we win. Uh, the Mentat, I don't think we get it because I think it has to be in its space, right? I feel like that was in the FAQ too. I thought I read that. What is this called? Sort through the chaos? Oh, they changed it. They did clarify. In the book, it very... No, Anand, thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Uh, but in the book, it, that symbol means you only take it if it's in the Lancerad Council space still. But this in the FAQ tells you you take it at the start of the next round. So that clears that up.
So it still works. Okay, we're good. I felt a little dumb when I took the Mentat and I could have just got it anyway. But this, this works. This, this is from the FAQ. Sweet. So I'll just uh, take it right now, just so, so we remember. And we get an Intrigue card. Oh, hello. This works with our strategy, no? I think that's a good pull. We're, we're looking to make Solari. We're looking to move up the influence tracks uh, to make our cards better. I feel like that's a good one to have. And we get two Solari. So we'll just trade this back in and take a five. Sweet. All right. Uh, let's do the spice. Not forget it this time. There's nobody on any spice spaces. Okay, let's refill this. Uh, this is the card that's refilling in the market row. Smuggler's Thropper. Oh, look at this. Goes with our, if we're doing Spacing Guild stuff, that's another card. I mean, I wish it helped us go up on the Spacing Guild, but we are only one away from having two influence, so that could lead to some card draw. Lead to some pretty crazy, crazy turns. Mm, okay. Um, no end game. Let's recall. Where are we? Let's recall. Okay. Um, and then first player. Okay. Uh, new conflict. Okay, we're finally fighting for some victory points uh, from the conflict. And a card trash. Uh, and then my upside down card has shown up. So I'm going to flip it right side up. And that reminds me that... They get their third worker each. So it's about to get spicy. Ha ha! Ha ha! Alright, so they get the three workers each turn. Uh, so that's great. Great for me. Uh, Alright. Uh, so I'll draw. I only have four cards left. Let's uh, shuffle it up. Reconnaissance. Womp womp. All right, so, okay, we got this card. We got to make this card work, right? Let's, let's try to go up more on the Spacing Guild. We're only at level one on there, so we could also... We don't have enough spice to go there twice this turn. Or, or sorry, we can go there once, and then this will just move us up. So we can possibly go up twice on that track. Hmm. We also could go up just from this. Hmm. Oh, we could get a water. Uh, we could jump up here and get this bonus. And get some water. We can jump up here and get a victory point. We can rush a little harder up this one and try to get the two extra workers. Or, uh, troops, troops. Okay. Uh, so red is going first. Selective breeding. Oh, we can get the spice. I thought it would be gone, but it's not. So red goes up and gets a victory point. Tight race. We have a tight race. All at two victory points. Woo. So Edward is saying, good thing to remember is that in a three or four player game, no one else could steal the Mentat from you this turn. That's so cool. That's so cool. I get the spice. <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't think it was going to work out, but I was, man, we, oh, so good. All right. Uh, so yeah, let's just go there. Uh, we need to pay two water. Let's get rid of that water. And, uh, we get six spice. Holy. So we'll take one and then we'll take a five. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, and what else we get to do is combat space. We don't have any units in there. I feel that was worth it. Uh, okay, now we're going to the beast. He is going to harvest the spice. Um, so he's going to take this spot because they're both tied for bonus. So he'll go here um, and he gets three. So we'll throw away two, take this one. He gets a five that puts him to seven. He spends that seven right away and goes up one victory point. Uh, now we go to Earl. 
Oh, uh, yeah, he has no garrison units, right? Yep. So we go to Earl. Conspire. And that will go up one here. He gets a point. Oh, I'm losing. And then he's going to recruit two cubes to his garrison. Holy. Okay, our turn. I feel like I need to get the red alliance as fast as possible, right? Oh, uh, the card on top of my deck is... Oh, power play. Power play. Oh, that'd be a great turn. Trying to go race up the red track? Uh, yeah. Uh, can we draw cards? How are we drawing cards? We don't have our signet ability. Uh, we don't have water anymore to go here for some crazy card draw. This space is taken. Uh, we don't want to go to the Mentat space. That seems kind of lame. Maybe Ar Arakin? 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 Yeah, I know. <laughs> I need to do it more, I know. I said at the start of the video, I'm going to forget to look at my card all the time. I'll only look when I feel like I need something else in my hand. But I felt like I had all the tools. But yeah, I keep forgetting I have, I have much juicier cards in here now that if I can grab those. It seems like every time I go to draw, it's always like just these kind of cards and stuff. That aren't really my, my like starter cards. So, uh, I could go here to draw a card. I think that's the play. Uh, yeah, Darren, I saw that change actually. Uh, I tweeted about it and respond to them. We were talking about it in our Discord earlier, but uh, yeah, we'll discuss that more on like our Marvel Champions stream probably, or uh, our Sunday Arkham Horror stream. We'll discuss that uh, that news a little more in depth. You guys know my rants on that from before, so yeah, it's good news. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, so we are going to go to here, and that will get us a dude in the combat. We'll get to draw a card. So we got our power play. And that's all that spot's really doing. Right, right. Okay, let's go to green. Uh, we're going to churn. We're going to get rid of these two cards. They're gone. That's fine. And these are the replacements. Ooh, I like the trash cards. Oh, we're out of cards. We've got to reshuffle. And he is going to Highliner. And that's going to go up. Oh, he goes up. He he takes the bonus in solo, right? Does he, he takes the three Solari. I'm pretty sure. Or they don't gain the bonus in solo. I know they don't in two player. All right. Uh, I don't know if the AI gets this bonus three Solari. I forget if they get that in uh, in single player. No, I don't think they get that bonus. I don't think they get that bonus, but they do take this. I'm pretty sure uh, this was green. Yep. Yeah. So now that he has this, his faction ability is going to get him two cubes, uh, which is crazy. <laughs> okay, bastard. It's gonna make it harder for me to get that alliance. Man. Okay. Um. And then we go red. Oh no, we didn't finish. He gets. Uh, he gets three troops to his garrison. 
And he's going to deploy... Oh no, three to the conflict, and he has none to deploy from his garrison. Oh, and he gets a victory point. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep. There's so much to do here. I'm trying to like catch it all. I'm not done yet, but yeah, good catch. Uh, so we got that victory point. He gets doesn't get the bonus. He was on a combat space. He has nothing to move in. He got three uh, troops put in, and we moved him up the track. A lot fired off on that card. Uh, and now this guy is going to go to Carthag. Okay, he will recruit one to the conflict, push two in. Okay, and my turn again. Go up twice. Yeah, I can't get the alliance this turn uh, with this card. If he didn't grab that, I could have, I could have gone up three times, one, two, three, and got the alliance. Um, but he just beat me to it. But I could have grabbed it this turn to fire off a victory point on this card instead. But that's okay. That is okay. And this victory point is now looking like it's going to be harder to do. So is there some way we can focus on that maybe? I mean, we can go rally some troops. I feel like that's the thing we need to do. Rallying some troops, but it does spend our Solari, and we're not going to have Solari when we draw into uh, our other cards later. One, two, three, four, five, plus we have our Signet coming. So we are going to see that one that we can spend six Solari to get a victory point. And we already have a way to spend two here. Um, so yeah, going to this to rally troops might not be the best play, because we'll be spending up all our Solari. Unless I generate some this turn. I do have a lot of Spice. I could go here and we just generate a whack of Solari and then we go to like here to rally troops. But then again, we won't have enough to do the fight this turn. Uh, I say we just stay on task. Op red and greens points. Okay, uh... I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, this is a combat space. Uh, that's why he pushes two in. Yeah, it's a combat space on the board there. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, you can see it also on the card. It's pretty clear. Um, yeah. Definitely a combat space. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's go with Guild Ambassador. Um, No, let's use power play first, I think. Power play first because we could get locked out of it. Uh, we're going to go to folded space. We're going to get a folded space card. Okay. That will bring us up two on that track. Bang, bang. And we get a victory point. Okay. Uh, I think that's the play. I don't know. All right. Green still has a worker left. Hardy Warriors. Boom. And this also is a combat space. He's going to move up one on this track. And he's going to take two of his units. Throw them in the combat. And none in his garrison. Alright. Red is out of workers. Back to us. Uh, hmm. We're going to go to rally some troops. We're going to spend four Solari. And that is going to get four guys from our garrison. Or into our garrison. 
And it will also move us up one on the red, which will get three Solari from that. For crossing into space four. Okay. Uh, they're out. Back to me for a recovery, or, or uh, sorry, a, uh, what's it called? A reveal turn. Uh, so I have four points in hand, two on the board. Oh, sorry, power play gets trashed. I didn't even see that. Power play gets trashed. Another card out of our deck. Thank you for catching that. All right, sweet. Still learning the game. Thank you so much for the help. All right, so six. Uh, six to spend. What are we doing here? I mean, I could buy these two and get some Fremen Bonds going. Which would increase, we have, I think, one Fremen card in our deck. This would make three. I'm pretty sure we have one. I don't know. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't have another one. I feel, oh no, we do, we do. We have that one that has the Fremen Bond with Spice. We could increase so these three cards will all work together. Or we could just lean into the Space Guild, which we already have two influence with. Just to get some card draw going. Grab some Spice with this card. This will get some Solari going, possibly, and trashing a card, trashing some weak cards out of our deck, and helping later game combats. I feel like that's the way to go. Right now. Or I just buy this more expensive card, and this could, like, get us extra spice. I do like this card a lot, just getting the bonus spice, if we can line up, like, one of these two spaces to double the spice from it. Uh, it's pretty huge. Hey, Static. Welcome, welcome. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, if you're looking to understand, it's all recorded. There's a DVR feature, Keith, if you need to, like, scrub back and you want to see, like, if I did something wrong. I, I obviously do ro things wrong in this game. Uh, you know, chatting with the chat, just having fun. You know, I miss things. I'm still learning the game for sure. I appreciate the help. But yeah, you can scrub back if you're trying to understand like why something happened. It may be, I, I just made a mistake. So it's on the interwebs. You can always scrub back. And it, it, it's working right now. You can scrub back too. So, and, and then you can jump back and bounce around. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure when exactly we're talking about. Oh, trying <laughs> You're trying to work and watch at the same time? I'm trying to play and chat at the same time. It is definitely hard to do two things at once. <laughs> understood. Understood. Wait. You're watching while working? Hmm. That doesn't seem right. I won't tell your boss. All right. Unless you're your own boss. And that's hilarious. Okay. Um, it's our reveal turn. Yes. So we were talking about cards. Talk about cards. What are we... Are we thinking... I'm thinking of going for the knife... And then seeing what comes up, and then maybe grabbing this card. So yeah, we'll grab the knife. We'll draw. On Ar Arrakis Recruiter. Nah. And then we'll grab the Fed Fedekin Fedekin Death Commando. Just because his art's cool. Okay. Oh, another power play showed up. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's clean up. Oh, uh, we can do this right now. Let's do this before we forget, I think. I think, unless we're trying to have the Solari next turn. But no, I think we just do this now. Because I, I know I'll forget. Uh, do we just try to take this alliance back from him so he can't put as many units in the combat? I think that's the play. And then we'll grab this. Uh, green will go down. And we will go up, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's our reveal turn. We cleaned up combat. Uh, we just have two. 
and we're going to put the green is going to have no extra but they already have 10 and red is going to have two extra so they're going to be at eight so green gets a victory point and the trash a card thing doesn't matter second place is red red gets a water and red gets a spice and we'll clean up the tokens okay and we'll reset these and we'll put some spice out okay um and no end game mentat goes back let's get our guys let's get our guys back uh, maybe we'll get their guys back uh where's Pass first player, that's us. So put it right here. So we're first player. Now we're gonna draw. Oh, look at this. If we keep going this influence track route, we're getting like all the tools are presenting themselves for that. So the winner of this can choose two different influence tracks to go up. Is that a good one to fight for? I feel like it is. Because we go up one more on this track, we get a point. We go up two more on this track, we get a point. And we go up two more on this track, we get a point. Plus all the bonuses. I mean, that's a lot of points sitting around. And maybe we can keep the AI from grabbing some of them. I don't know. We'll see, though. We will see. I still want to get some points out of the cards in my deck. I want to see that happen. Four, three, four five. So five cards drawn. So we got our Signet Ring, Dune. All starter cards except for the Spice Hunter. Fremen Bond. Again, we don't see that. We can check the top card of our deck. There it is. Opulescence. I don't know, after I spent all that spice last turn, I only have two, or uh, Solari, sorry, Solari. But what my plan was is uh, we can spend some spice at the melange, sell the melange, get a whole bunch of Solari, and then we'll save this card for the end of the turn and pop off a victory point off of it. And then our other card, hopefully we stay with the Alliance. Um, we may have to fight for it again. But hopefully when this comes back around, we can have three spice to spend to get a victory point off that. So we should be able to get a couple of victory points. I hope like two or three out of our deck. But again, it depends what the AI does to us. But uh, I just want to get those. It's like my own little achievement of getting... I've never seen victory points on these cards. Uh, I want to score a couple. I think it's fun. I didn't realize there's that way to get victory points too when I've played it a few times before. Okay. Um... Where were we? We drew our hand. Uh, oh, we're first player. We're first player. So what do we want to do? Do we want to grab some spice here before the AI grabs it? Do we want to grab the Mentat before it's gone? Do we, we want to worry about combat? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, in general, we have guys that can actually move into the combat now, which is nice. Um, hmm. I mean, I like how we have this space, though, access to it now, too. I love holding on to Spice for this space late in the game. So I'm kind of abandoning that strategy if I start trading it in for Solari to get points from my hand. Hmm. I can't go to that space right now. Yep, I can't even I can't even go there anytime soon anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Grab in spice and move in too. Yeah, okay. Yep. It sounds good. Sounds good. Uh so let's play Dune the Desert Planet. We're gonna grab three spice. So we'll just turn in this two. And now we have a total of ten. Sweet. Okay, green. Oh yeah, I forgot to move in my two. Uh, green. Churn. Okay, so the big expensive spice gathering card is gone. And another garbage card has come out. Oh, space travel made another appearance. A little too late though. Okay, so he's going to conspire. And he'll go up one on this track. And sorry, gain two into his garrison. Red wants to go to Arakeen. 
recruit one into the conflict, move two in from the garrison, and gets to fire off his ability to take a spice, which puts him to seven and gets him a victory point. Because he'll spend it right away. All right, my turn. Oh, uh, yeah, we did all that, yep. Okay, now what? Hmm. I mean, we have 10 spice. We could just spend like four up here to get 10 Solari. We only need six this turn. We gotta do our signet ability too, though. Hmm. I think I'm gonna get the Mentat. He'll give me some card draw, also some card draw off the ring. I don't know. Oh, sorry, it was one and two. Uh, okay, yep, we can fix that. One and two. Uh, so this one stayed. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I didn't count over correctly. Woo! Fun times, fun times. <laughs> yeah, Wild Inferno, so you guys are making some good points. Bob's saying the AI players concede due to his analysis paralysis. Uh, this is not analysis paralysis. I feel like I'm discussing with the chat pretty well and then just moving on and not getting hung up. But you can get really hung up in this game with all the choices, what the AI could do, what options are here, what's in your hand, what could you draw into, you know, what order should you do things, will the AI take those spaces? There's lots of AI traps here for sure, but as Wild Inferno is saying, AI in solo play, who cares? Uh, it will just be a longer play, but that's part of the fun with uh, playing solo, is no other player is waiting for their turn. And playing on stream, that's the only thing is, I don't have unlimited time, as I value you guys' time as well, so, uh, yes, I would sit here sometimes and, and really, really think of a couple paths and see which one to go with. I am going to discuss it because that's part of the fun of doing it live and making a video on the internet. I'm not going to just rush through it and you guys aren't following along at why I'm doing things. Uh, so that's what we try to do here on Rob's Gaming Table for anyone that's new. Um, it's not necessary analysis paralysis. It's me trying to teach players, A, how the game works, A, how much strategy there is for those who are maybe interested in buying the game, uh, just to see thought process, and you're able to follow along. I found when I was getting into YouTube, uh, a lot of playthrough videos, I couldn't follow along because they edit it, they put their head down, and they just rely on the comments later. Um, but what I try to do, even edit it or not, is try to explain, and my videos become longer for it, but I know there are people out there like myself uh, who will sit and want to follow along and understand. So when I'm running into mistakes also, and you guys are catching them, that's great. I'm all about it. And I love discussing that. I love catching that stuff. So those who are watching this later or now can learn from it. So it's very, very on purpose, uh, way, way I'm doing it. Yes, I would like to make less mistakes in this game. But that means I should have played this game a lot more, maybe before bringing it to the table. But what I find, if I played like 20 games of Dune Imperium, A, I'd be bored of it probably and not want to stream it and not care about it. Uh, B, I then come to the table and I may have already developed bad habits. So that's the other thing. So I do like the advantage of coming live, playing the game only a few times. I feel like I understand it, but trying to run a stream, trying to keep track of what's going on on the board, talking about strategy, trying to remember what's what, I'm gonna make mistakes, it's just gonna happen. Like, you know, so uh, that's, that's my logic behind everything. <laughs> and Bob says, we all love a good rules argument. That's also fun too, I love doing that. I love just figuring out things and people misinterpreting rules. Because one of my things in the hobby, I feel, is like rule books, they need work. And I feel like companies don't spend enough time with the rules. This game is a horrible rule book. Uh, they tried to save paper, it seems. There is no examples with photos or anything. They leave a whole bunch of stuff out of the rule book and tell you to refer to the reference sheets for information. Um, which is crazy to me. Uh, yeah, so that's a whole other thing. So that's going to lead to me misunderstanding things in the game because I read that rule book multiple times and the sheets and the FAQ and still it's like there's it would have been nice for some example pages, not just some text examples, uh, but some actual physical showing the game on the board, you know, with arrows and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so that'll lead to some mistakes happening too. And we already seen, we've seen people come in here, 
chirping rules at me saying I'm doing this wrong or doing that wrong. And then we find out that it's like some other people are playing it wrong too, even though they played a whole bunch. You know, no one's perfect. So it, as long as we can all admit that, it's all good. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm not feeling bad about it at all. Uh, I think it's good that we all learn and we admit our mistakes. But yeah. No, it's all good. I'm not taking offense. It's all good, Bob. I know, I know Bob's just joking around, but I do want to, for those who are new to the channel and don't understand, uh, yeah, it's all good. Call out things, ask questions. If you think you know a rule, call me out on it and we can discuss it. Uh, because yeah, I see lots of debates. I go to these games in the Board Game Geek forums and you'll see the rules. The rules forum will have more discussion points than strategy or than general. And that's like always a crazy sign, right? That just means like the game either is poorly designed or the rule book sucks or the tutorials suck or the examples suck or, you know, the wording, the English translation, stuff like that can all lead to that kind of things, right? So yeah, so I love the way we can all discuss and figure things out. It's all good. It's all good. I'm in no rush either, but. <laughs> chirping, my definition of chirping is uh basically like being kind of rude about like um kind of like stating something as fact and kind of being aggressive about it and then it's like you know yeah it's like i do it too sometimes where i'm like no this is how it works and we look it up and i'm like i was wrong <laughs> that's chirping so you're just like you know i don't know that's the way i think of chirping i'm probably wrong on that but yeah Anyways, all right, uh, I don't know what we were doing. We got this. We were first. Red is gone, green's gone. Oh yeah, we were deciding our next turn. Uh, the Mentat, I think, right? We don't need to get the Mentat because we can draw this one card. But I mean, we get two card draw off of it. I just have to spend Solari. Um, but we can get Solari from selling Melange. Let's do it. I don't know. Let's go here, spend the two, draw two cards, one, two, okay, so we have this card, we're going to try to line this card up this turn, I think, I don't know, we'll see, okay, so we drew our two cards, we get this guy, spend our money, go to green, boom, green's going to go to selective breeding, and he'll gain one in purple. Oh man, they're really going up these tracks. And red. Harvesting spice. There is none. Gonna draw a new card. Still suits. Or still still suits? Goes here. Uh goes up one in the blue. Oh man, he's gonna take that token. And deploy up to two uh to the conflict and move two in. Yeah, red's like uh bullying this turn. Really bullying. Man. All right, next. Uh, let's go. I mean, we can go to that Freeman spot. No, we don't have water. Do I go for that spot? Do I try to get water from here? I mean, I don't really care about conflict stuff right now. Hmm. But we could get two warriors off here and move two in. We still wouldn't be in a good spot. I don't have any cards to give me plus swords other than these in my hand. Uh, which I would be using one of them. Nah. Well, let's not care about that. Let's go sell some spice. Uh, I'm just going to sell four for ten solari. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, green. Folded space. Boom. Uh, green. Oh, now ties with me. That's okay. That's okay. I still keep this token for now. For now. I need to go up one more there, but I have other cards that we can do that with, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um, red still has one worker left. Uh, we're churning the last two. Let's do this correct. This. Oh, power play is gone. Power play is gone. We got the Doctor and Guild Bankers. Oh, that's a cool card. Spice Must Flow costs three less. <gasps> oh, I want to get that card. I want to try that. Maybe, we, maybe we'll have enough to buy these for six 
and get a, a point off that maybe. I doubt it'll come around, but we'll see. We'll see. Harvesting spice, nope. Still suits, taken. Rally troops. Uh, he only has three troops left. So he's going to put that many in the garrison. Our turn. We have one worker left. Yeah, we should have went up on the Freeman track. I agree. I should have done that. <laughs> Carthag is a good fallback if you're unsure. Yeah, we need intrigue cards. That's something I'm lacking. Uh, every time I play it, I lack on that. So we do have the option. I mean, these are the two I would play from. Yeah, let's try. Carthag. Carthag. Let's try it. Zach saying Carthag. Let's go there. Uh, so we get a cube in. I, I, I don't think we push in, right? Unless, oh wait, I can do it in any order, right? I can do it in any order. So I think I can draw my entry card first. Yeah, see, we get two swords. Two swords. Hmm, maybe we do. Okay, we definitely get a cube in here. So he's at seven cubes. I can push two more in, be at five. I get this, but he also flips a card, right? Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this. I do have one sword in hand, but I mean, I, I think I, I just put it into my garrison, right? I think I'm allowed to do that, right? If I get a cube from here, it can go in my garrison. I don't need to move it in. Red should have two less cubes in the conflict. Did I? Oh, I, did I move him in on this one? I, I probably moved him in on this one, right? Force a habit? No, I didn't. I just gave him three in their in their thing. What did I do? Not clean them up? It moves in two from here, and it moves in two from here. And then one cube from here. Oh, yeah, I guess I did mess it up, right? But if he's only at five... I say I go for it. I, I'm going for it. I mean, it's not victory points. I probably should save it. We're about to, we're about to go into the level four conflict cards. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but I can go up twice on two tracks, which could leave a victory point here. I could get a victory point here. I could secure my other one here. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. It's tempting. Oh, oh, I, I did this, right? Yeah, I did this by accident. I did this by accident. I, I kept thinking he was, he was going there. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Thank you. All right. So let's just uh, push them all in. Let's go for it. We have two swords here, one in hand. Uh, it might not be enough. We might tie. That would really suck. Mm. One red cube should be in a supply. But he went here, right, to move four cubes in? Oh, yeah, you're right. I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whoops, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because he would have... I moved too many in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Corrected, corrected. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't know. I think it's risky. He might still beat me, and then that's a lot I put in for two Solari and one water. Yeah, I think I'm going to chicken out. I think I'm going to chicken out and not put everything in. But then that means red will go up one here. And they'll go up one on purple or one on black. Jeremiah's saying no. No to what? Should I go all in? You guys want me to do it? You want me to go in? Take second place? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. 
Let's save it and try it, because we're about to draw under the level 3 cards, which are better. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll wait. We can use this on the better cards anyway. We'll save this. We'll save this too. Okay, we'll, we'll chicken out. We'll chicken out. Uh, we'll hold off. We'll hold off. Okay. Uh, what's next? What's next? I think that's it. They have nobody left. We're going to a reveal turn, right? So we get... One plus two more, we're going to five. Okay, so we have five money to spend and we can spend six Solari for a victory point, leaving four left. Five points. Uh, we're going to take this Guild Bankers card. I don't know if it'll work out for us, but I like the symbols on it. But we could buy these Spice Must Flow cards for three less. So for six, we can straight up buy victory points. If we can get six going forward. I feel like we can. Okay, we'll replace it. Okay, I don't know who this guy is, but he's, I like his symbols on the left side there. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to spend the other three. I don't think I'm going to spend the other three. Actually, maybe this spacing guild. No. I like, I want to keep that Fremen bonus thing kind of happening if possible. So I'm going to pass on the other three. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Clean up. Uh, before we do the combat, I'm just going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. I didn't mess with anything, I promise. I, I was on nine victory points the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. I see you guys saying in the chat, uh, <laughs> I'll rig rig the victory points. <laughs> At least I can't mess with the AI deck because it's in the app, right? <laughs> uh, go to hell. All right. Uh, now, okay, we did clean up. Um, combat. So green is in the combat. Nope. Red's in the combat, though. And he's going to draw a card. He'll get three swords. And then plus 10 more, 13. So three swords. So I would have pushed in all three. I'd have been at 10. I have two from his. I have one from my cleanup. We would have tied. We would have tied, right? So I we would have shared each got a water and two Solari. Uh, that would suck. That would suck. But then again, I would stop him from going up the tracks. He still would get a victory point because he'd be up to three water. But anyways, uh, all right, so red wins. Uh, we're going to move him up one for sure on this track. Now the other choice is purple or black. I think I go up one on purple maybe. Because they can fight with this guy. I don't, I don't need him to fight with me maybe. I don't know. Okay, uh, so we clean up here. Okay, 
um, spice here and here. End game. Nope. Uh, Mentat back. We take our guys. Turn all the agents. Okay, agents returned. Pass first player. And reveal a conflict. Here we go. First level three, two victory points and control over Carthag. Carthog. I don't know how you say it. All right. Draw on five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. What do we get? And what's our top card? Our top card is Chris Knife. Hmm, I wish I drew that. How do we... Because we don't have the Fremen Bond. We need to get another Fremen card drawn. So I think we go for... Oh, uh, right here. I have a way to trash, draw and trash a card. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Uh, but green is first. He's going to Selective Breeding. Which he'll go up here and gain this. And green will get a victory point. And now turns on his second part of his ability uh, where he gets two, uh, two troops instead of one off brutality. Red will harvest spice. Uh, go here. Take four. Okay, uh, our turn. Oh, yeah, I didn't even take my second place stuff. I was so sad, I, I yeah, I should have taken it, you're right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and two Solari. Thank you, thank you. Uh, three. I'm really trying not to help myself here and trying to lose the game as best I can, but you guys keep catching me. Damn it. I'm trying to fail, stop, stop helping me. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Need to secure, Wild Inferno saying, need to secure that space guild spot against green. Oh, this, yes. Yes, 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 yes. A thousand percent. I want to take this. I want to take this spot. I want to take this Highliner spot. All right, we're going to do it right now. Just which card should we do it with? I feel like in this case we play Diplomacy, but because we don't need this card right now. I don't care about the money from the Diplomacy, but... Hmm. Oh yeah, but then it turns on this other card. Yeah. Yeah, we can really win the combat this turn for sure. I think. Uh, if we do this right. So, I'm going to play Folded Space. Yeah. Let me see my other symbols, though. Yeah, see the problem? Full Displace is more flexible. I'm actually going to play Diplomacy right now. But... Yeah, just because it's so flexible. I can go to, like, anything. I, I know this. I want to do the targeted space, so... I want to leave my options open. So, I'm going to do Diplomacy. We're going to go to Highliner. I'm going to spend 6 Spice. Um... I get two water. Whoops. Two water. Uh, the cool part is I get five cubes from here. And I could put them all into the fight. Do I just do that? Or because I'm going to line up all this Fremen stuff and have swords like crazy. Mm, I feel like this one won't put guys in. What do they put in? Like they, they could get like five guys in. So yeah, let me, I'll just throw them all in. Yeah, I'm going to put them all in. I, I feel like I don't need to. I feel like I could put one back maybe just because of my swords that I should potentially have by the end. But then I, you know, like, uh, I don't want to risk it either. Cause then holding all the swords is worthless. Yeah, all in? Okay. <laughs> While Inferno says all in, let's do it. All right. But it's like, I know it's not going to end this turn. So it's like, I want to save some back for the next turn, right? So if I go big now, I might not have enough to go big next turn too, right? 
because I don't have more spice for this. Uh, I can also move two in, but I'm not going to do that. Red should have two troops in, right? Uh, oh, yes, it was a combat space. You're right. It was a combat space. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, all right. Oh, and we didn't go up on this track. Just trying to make sure I catch everything. So I miss a lot of it. Uh, yeah, we're not going to move two more in. But I, I mean, if it was like final two points, yeah. But I still feel like it's going to go another round. And we may see another two-pointer next round. And that may be like the clinching one where I really need to go all in. Uh, but hopefully I don't lose this one. But yeah. All right. Um, okay, green. Carthag. So green is going to drop one in the combat, move two in. Okay, red. Wealth. It's going to go up one on this track. Okay, back to me. I want to score this at the end of the round, but I need three spice. How am I doing that? Here? Do I really... I think I need to go for that three spice. And the AI will take that if I don't, because that's the next hot spot. I feel like grabbing this three spice might be really good right now. And then I can hold this card for the end of the turn and gain a victory point. Garrison more troops. And off rally the troops. I don't have a way to go conspire. I could also go for another Intrigue card. I, I, I debate going here also off a Folded Space. And remember, we can draw into this too. And this can help us go up on blue. Uh, so I'm going to save this for later. This I want to save for later. So it's one of these two cards. <laughs> hey, Shamar. Yeah, this game is cool. It's definitely cool. And you do not need to know the Dune IP. But Dune Imperium in general, like mechanically, uh, it's just a great game. I, I know nothing about Dune, and I think it's awesome. It's like number, it came out only like last like October, and it's already number 74 on Board Game Geek out of all board games of all time. It's crazy, just crazy. The solo mode's decent, but it's best at two, three or four players, supposedly. Uh, hopefully one day I can play that four player, freaking COVID. Um... Uh, this turn could be a four point if you win the conflict. Yeah. I mean, I could go crazier in the conflict. I am going to go to other combat spaces, I think. I could go that route, too. I'm going to grab the spice. I'm going to grab the spice. Spending a water. And I get this spice plus two more. Okay. Okay. Uh, do I move in two more into the combat? That is the question. I'm on five points. I could, if you're saying I win this combat, I could jump to nine. Because I would get two from this combat. Uh, I should get a Fremen card to get me up to this point. But the AI might steal this first, though. That's the only problem. I'm slow playing that one on purpose. Um, but maybe I can steal it from them later. Worst case. It's a little risky. I'm also trying to get a victory point from a card in my hand, which I have lined up now because I have three spice. So I could spend the three spice to get a victory point because I am aligned with that faction. So move them in. So I'm totally deciding next turn to not care about the combat. But I should have other ways to get points, like either on tracks 
to get that final point, or maybe I draw into um, draw into the other one that I can buy a point from hand. I do have six Solari. Or maybe I get an Intrigue card that gets me some points. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but either way, I think we just went. I'm going to move two in. I'm all in. You guys are telling me to go all in. I'm going all in. All right. So I moved two in because it was a combat space. All right. Green. They still have a worker left. And they're going to do secrets. No. All right. So green goes up one on this. Yeah. I won't be able to get an alliance with green or uh, with the pit purple, I don't think. But I do want to just go up one more on them at least. But that just disappeared this turn. So there goes my intrigue card. Son of a... All right. Uh, red. Conspire. It's open. Uh, red moves up and takes this point. Uh, so red's now caught up with us. And red will also recruit two to its garrison. Oh, yes, and the, the spice must flow. Yeah, I forgot that's our other point we're trying to get. But again, I'm not guaranteeing that because I might not get enough points on the turn. I feel like I have enough cards in my deck that I should, and card draw, that I should be able to just draw cards on that turn, uh, next turn, to hopefully draw into enough, um, what is it, persuasion, whatever the currency is that buys cards. From the deck building row i should be able to get to six i do have two here already uh every round so i just need to get four in hand i feel like i've been able to do that or you know could have done that very easily most rounds so yeah i forgot that's another path to get a point okay um so they're gone they're done so i, I everything's like I, I see i don't think i need to move in but because i have this as a backup so even if they drew like a 6, this guy would only be at, uh, he'd be at 12. And if I didn't move in, I'd have 10, 11, 12, plus like, I, I'm going to have so much fighting in my hand. I shouldn't have moved them in. You'll see, you'll see. <laughs> I shouldn't have moved them in. Uh, yeah, I still have one out. Because I, I, I have this Freeman Bond, yeah. I'm going to say I didn't do it. I'm going to say I didn't do it. I think I'll be fine. Because remember, I'm lining this up. I'm lining all these swords up. Which I think would have been like overkill, right? Uh, assuming I'm still drawing. Wait, which one did I have in hand? This one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fremen card. Yeah. Did I do that right? Okay. I just need to draw with my last worker, which I'll automatically draw off of this card. I'm going to use this card right now for sure. This is my plan. So I'm going to... Play this. I don't know where. Uh, I don't want to spend Solari. I want to go here. I could load up my uh, garrison uh, for next round, but I, I feel like I want to save the Solari so it's easier next turn to just, uh, if I get the point gathering one, I can do it. Knife was on top. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, okay, we did it right. Yeah, I forgot which one I picked up with which hand. I was like, oh. <laughs> They're both Fremen cards. I forget which one. Yeah, and I should be able to just grab this point. This is the point that I think is the one I'm going to grab to win the game. Uh, so I have that safety, because there's no way... I mean, oh, sorry, there is a way... Uh, oh, no, the AI, this guy will be first. So there's no way that only one AI turn will happen before me next turn, and they won't be able to take both these spaces. Uh, the only problem is I won't have spice, so I'll be trying to get spice to get this space. So if they take secrets first, I might be in trouble. But we just saw secrets, so hopefully that's not going to happen. So I have a few ways to get one point. But again, I like to keep my options open, which is why I'm, I'm debating building up for another fight next turn. In the next turn, it might not even be combat. It might not even be victory points. Um, so I should be fine. But it's just I like to, you know, like not overcommit and, and maybe it goes another round. I feel like I still win even if they win this combat because then I would have enough next turn, but I got to watch out for this. Okay. Um... Uh, where to go though? That's the question. I don't really care. I could just bring another guy in the combat from here. I don't need water though. Uh, I could I, I I could just go like ah here. I could go here. One of these, right? 
make sure I grab this first so then I don't have to fight for it. I am going to go up uh, on this card and get the Fremen Bond. So I will have that victory point also. Maybe. Yeah. So yeah, let me just... Hmm. I think we go there. I don't know. I don't know. Or I could go here and just draw a ton of cards. And then we, we might draw into the victory point to win right now. Maybe. I don't know. That would be funny. Should we just go here? I'll move some into the combat and then we just uh, draw a bunch of cards. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that. Oh, Wild Inferno is saying that. Draw three. Maybe you'll get enough to buy a point. That, yeah, it's, I, <laughs> I'm glad I got there before I read what you said. Uh, oh, yeah, full display should be trash, and I draw a card off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just put it there to resolve it, but I haven't... I, I gotta go to the space. All right, so I'm gonna try the drawing cards for fun. Uh, since we have the slurry, if we draw into the other card... I don't know if we'll have enough points for that card, though, if we draw into that one. Um, but let's do it. Let's go on. Let's correct that rollback at it. We'll just uh, say that I moved... Two in. We'll be for sure on it. Uh, we'll commit. And then um, I draw three cards plus another one off folded space. So one, two. Okay, we know what these were. Whoops. Okay, so these are our cards. Should just leave them out here so you guys can see. Okay, and then we're going to shuffle. Oh, yep. Don't worry, I clean those up later. I'm not worried about where cards go in the discard piles and stuff. I, I sort through it all at the end anyway. After the stream's over. Because I definitely throw trash cards like all off to the side of the table. And then I have to like sort out where those all go and everything. Sort out my decks, my discard piles and stuff. All good. But thank you. <laughs> nice catch though. Just popped in to push the like button before I had to work. Happy Thursday. Thank you, Spencer, so much. I appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks for hitting that like button. Enjoy your time at work. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so we're drawing two more, right? Opulescence and reconnaissance. All right, I think we got it here, right? We're at what, five? I think we can get five points here, right? Okay, let's jump from five to 10 and crush them. All right, uh, anything else I didn't do on this space? And the top card of the deck. Oh, the top card of the deck is also the discount one. That's cool. All right, let's uh, remember where we were. So now it's, uh, that was our turn, right? We did everything, pretty sure. And now we're going to go to <laughs> Velko's on holidays, drinking cocktails and watching Rob's Game and Tale. Love it, Velko. Enjoy. Enjoy. Drink responsibly. <laughs> okay, so let's do our reveal turn, right? They're all done. Okay. So let's do our swords and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can. Okay. So we got a Freeman bond or Fremen bond because we played multiple Fremen cards, two of them. Uh, so we're going up one on this track. That gets us a water. And that gets us an alliance with them, which gets us one point. Um. We also get four swords. Might do this in a weird order, but we also have one money. Okay, one money. Okay, these cards are done. Okay, uh, let's just tap those or something. Uh, this one, we have an alliance with the Spacing Guild, so we can spend three, uh, three spice to buy ourselves a victory point up to seven. We get two more points off this one to spend. One point off this one. And this one gets us another point. We're up to five, six, seven uh, for purchasing. And then we can spend uh, six Solari to get another victory point. 
We're up to eight. Okay. Purchasing and cleanup. Uh, we have seven. And I don't think it matters. But man, I wish I saw this card. Then we could buy this and get another point. Um, sure, I'll take this card for five. And then that's all. Uh, well, I'll draw, I guess. Oh, I like this card. This is a fun card. Gunthopter. Messing with your opponents. Uh, okay, so I'll pass on spending two more. Uh, and then combat. So everyone's in the combat. Green will get a card. No bonus. So green's at six. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't add in my cubes. 10, 12, 14 more. So we're at 18. Uh, and red's in the combat. Is it Tugboat Man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he gets one sword. So red is at one, plus four more is at five. Okay. Uh, now I can play combat cards. Sure, I'll play this one. Ha <laughs> ha. Adding two more. 20. And combat resolves. So I get two points. And I'll take control of Carthag. Which does not matter. And second place gets some junk. Uh, which would not be... It'd be green getting spice. Uh, sure, we can just do it. Green gets spice. Oh, they do get an, a third intrigue card. So they spend that right away. And green goes up one victory point. Right? They don't have any other way to get points. This doesn't have enough. Uh, that's gone. We send these back. We reset this. Combat's done. Spice. Only one spice goes on the board. Check for end game. I'm at 10. Boom, I win. Right? And that's that. So we did it. We did it. We crushed the AI. Crushed them. But yeah, I definitely see why waiting. Like, this is why they were. you guys were talking about earlier for those. Always remember it's a race game. I know, I know. But here's the other cards. Like... And the last four turns of the game, there is like at least six victory points up for the grabs, right? So that's why they, I know there was talk earlier about uh, saving combat and not even caring about combat up until that point. The only reason why I cared about combat a little bit is because a lot of them were like uh, moving up your faction. And that kind of worked with those cards we bought early that just paid off right now. Like this, uh, helping us get Solari if we're like, you know, uh, maybe not the, that one, but uh, this one, right? We wanted to be high on the track to get Alliance so we could buy victory points with this card. And yeah, just getting victory points on this, I kind of was going the influence route. Uh, just because it worked with that first card we bought, I kind of like went in that direction. Uh, so everything I was doing was kind of that race. And if, maybe if they were drawing victory point cards, because remember... Uh, the other uh, cards, so the cards we didn't see, uh, like the number one cards, there are two with victory points on them that we could have seen, like one of them, to maybe start it off with a victory point. Uh, then out of the twos, look at out of that shuffle, we, we four level two uh, victory point cards were not in the game. So that made it a little like awkward that there was there was no control flags either, really, right? That usually there's at least a couple of those in there, right? So somebody's controlling these early. Literally, the last control didn't come out till the end of the game, basically. Uh, but yeah, just based on the shuffle of the conflict deck uh, and what you draw and what goes in the deck, definitely changes the feel of the game. I feel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounded silly. Uh. All the level three cards are right here, Bob. They, this, one of them doesn't, but one of them goes up two on a single influence track, which usually should lead to you getting a point. Because either you're making yourself from zero going up to two to get a point, or usually you're rushing up to be the first one to get an alliance or bypassing someone to steal the alliance. I, I, I feel that whenever you can go up twice on the same track, you're usually getting a point into that. No, I didn't shuffle poorly. I shuffled correctly so that the game felt completely different this time than when I played it the other three times. 
just based on the shuffle. But it just goes to show there's like uh, a lot of variability in these decks, uh, this deck, that can change strategy, right? All these different cards coming up in different orders, different times, based on what strategy you're going for, the other players are going for, can totally mess with the game. Obviously, a deck building game based on what cards appear at what times and who's valuing what, who has the money for what, uh, totally changes the game. And based on which factions show up, like if a lot of Space Guild cards kept showing up and some of the other factions weren't, uh, you might see that become a hot thing and people try to go for those. It might make the game feel different because people might be focusing on a certain faction spaces based on them showing up more often. And of course, uh, the Intrigue cards. So like just based on what cards come out of here. Oh, look at this one. Uh, this is one from the AI. Lose three of your troops in the conflict to gain a victory point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would have done that. Not right now, but that's a good card. But yeah, so just based on what's a hidden information in here. Oh, that would have been a nice one to get. So yeah, there's little cards in this Intrigue deck. Can totally shape the game. Oh, look at this. Spend four spice for a victory point. Yeah, there's lots of stuff in this Intrigue deck that I've yet to see or play with. Seven Solari for a victory point. Uh, there you go. In a combat, you could be moving up the influence track for some spice. Yeah, lots of, I like these entry cards. They seem really cool. I haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, but I do want to play one time where I focus heavily on them and see if, uh, by digging through this deck, the only problem why I haven't really focused on it, because I feel it's very random. So even though you could focus on it, just based on the other players drawing Intrigue cards and based on which cards are at the top of the deck in the first half, the victory points may not come up to you. And uh, But hopefully you get some cards that help you win combats instead. So it will either way, going lots of Intrigue cards, I feel like would shape your play. So maybe you see a good mix, you know, and you can hold those cards till the right time and stuff and, and plan for them. So if you draw into a couple cards that need spice to get your victory points or do something like that, you can then start working. It can kind of help direct your game, right? And then there's also the end game cards. Uh, there's a couple of them. Like this. Uh, so if you're at three influence or more on three faction tracks, you get a victory point. Or three influence or more on four tracks, you get two victory points. So there's like little hidden ways if you go like the faction route. If you go the, the spice must flow cards. Like these cards, there's a extra bonus end game card in there for getting more on this. But again, if you don't see it early enough, it's hard to like shape your play around it. Uh, but you might get lucky and draw into it, even though you're kind of going one route and not the other. I don't know. I just like that. I, I like the intrigue cards. I just need to draw them more. I feel like I ignore them because of the randomness of it. And the first couple times I played, all the intrigue cards I were drawing, it felt like at every three I draw, two of them were like useless to me. Like they just didn't fit what I was doing. I didn't need them. And uh, I didn't have the resources for them. And I didn't want to change my play to get them. And things like that. Um, so yeah, that's the only issue. But I still like them. They're fun. I like how it's like a hidden hidden information at the table that could lead to players winning combats when you don't think they could. Or pulling victory points out of nowhere. Racing up influence tracks when you didn't think they could. Um, that kind of stuff. I, I like that intrigue deck. It's very cool. I just next time I play, I gotta. I want to try hard and just play a play through of focusing on the intrigue deck, and seeing if that can lead to uh, to a play. Obviously, like you'd be going here, I think, and working more with the purple faction, uh, which would be cool. But also, you get an intrigue card up here. You get an intrigue card here. Uh, and there are cards in here that give intrigue cards. Where else? Oh, there's character that's probably focused on it, right? Is there a leader that's focused on intrigue cards? Oh, this guy. Yeah, we take this guy. <laughs> yeah, scheming. Scheming, scheming. Yeah, we take this guy and try to play like that. I think that would be funny. Edward's saying, and the intrigue card you get could be worth up to three in-game points. Uh, oops, I mean two more in-game points from one entry card. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the spice must flow, right? It's a possibility of getting like three off there, I think. Or is it two? I think only two. I think two is the max you can get off an endgame card that I saw. But yeah, it's crazy. And Bernardo says, I feel like the game is extremely tight. Bernardo, I am so jealous of you. I want to play with a full player count. I want to try it with like uh, all, all four human players. Uh, I cannot wait to see this game played like that. 
I'm looking forward to getting our second COVID shots, me and all the rest of our gaming gang, and we can get back together again. Stay tuned. I will definitely play this game again on the channel. Definitely a four-player. Uh, that's got to happen. I'll probably play it solo again. Um, but yeah, four-player for sure. Or three, if somebody cancels. <laughs> I'll still play with three humans. I don't want to play with the AI anymore, really. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I like the game. Every play I play it, I'm liking it more and more. It's, yeah, four, four plays now, I think. Four plays. Two solo. Two two-player playthroughs. But again, I, I like I bought this game. I want to play with more players. Like I bought it for that reason. I did want to try the solo mode because obviously this game flying high up the BGG track, being in the top 100 games in like six months, uh, shows that it's good at all player counts. Otherwise, I don't think it would fly up that fast during like COVID times, right? Oh, and it's like at the two player and one player still works. Um, I like how it's pretty simple to run in the two player mode. Like, for example, uh, like a game that we're looking at playing that way is like Root. Uh, to be able to play at lower player counts, you throw in a couple AI to run. Um, but I feel like, I, I haven't done it yet, but just looking at it, it feels like that's more complex to do and not as streamlined. Uh, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, but this just seems like they did an okay job of the two-player and the solo. It's not bad. The, the solo feels like it's uh, really fighting with you. And they're, they're competing. Obviously, didn't compete a lot today. <laughs> um, but yeah. But I definitely need to up the difficulty or change out my leader. Um, I definitely want to spice it up with some different difficulties and the different leaders. Uh, and playing against different AI. Because uh, you could switch out your leaders for the AI and they do different abilities too, right? Uh, which is interesting. Velko says, do you like two-player solo better? Um... I think two player, just because there's less fiddliness with an AI, and I prefer to play with more humans at the table over playing against AI. I'm just always been that way. I always play my video games. I'd rather play online against multiple humans rather than play single player stories against poorly programmed AI opponents uh, that you just can like find flaws in and exploit. Which the same thing works in board games. You just find the flaws in the design of the AI and just exploit it and you just crush it. But um, I think the the solo is fine. Once you play it a couple times, it, it it's easy to understand how they work. I like this solo, even though it's an additional like page and a half of rules, it's not bad. The, it's just clarifying a few things. It's not like learning a completely new game or anything like that. I think they did an okay job. Just the churning the market deck, you need to do that. I feel like it just nudges it up just that much better at solo and two-player. Find a way to churn the deck if you're not going to use the app. Just roll a random die or something every round. Cycle cards in the market deck. That feels like it must be in deck building games uh, from the start. <laughs> Human tendency to hack any system. Yeah. You don't. Uh, Bob says you don't just play Baron Vladimir Hark. Harkonnen. Baron Vladimir Harkonnen plays you. <laughs> I need to go watch this movie or something. I gotta figure this. I don't know these jokes. Unless you're just talking about the Simpsons Russia joke. Yeah, Wild Inferno. Yeah, they did a good job at, at the flow, right? The AI turns go really quick. Like, it's really easy just to be like, flip a card, they go here, they do this. Like, I, I do like that a lot. I, I do think they did a very good job. And yet they still gather resources and stuff. Some AI designs, they don't do that. And I think the solo one where they're actually collecting resources, uh, they're stealing spaces, they're going up tracks, uh, and they're spending those to get victory points. I think it's a very, very clever balance uh, way to do it. Very clever, very clever. Brian's saying, I think Arnak is better solo since you can ramp up the difficulty in my honest opinion. But you can ramp up the difficulty in this game too, no? Or am I misunderstanding, Brian? Yeah, remember in this game, there's four uh, four difficulty modes for solo. I only played like level one. But it can go up to four. It can go up to expert plus. Uh, but you can make it much more difficult by following this chart here on the right. 
and making things on the board more expensive, giving them more starting troops, giving them resources to start, making them get their third worker faster. If you play on Expert Plus, you don't get your third worker. You have to only play with two the whole game. <laughs> so that, that's a good ramp in difficulty, I think. Bernardo says, you need to read slash hear the book. It will make the game 100% better. Oh, okay, I believe you. I believe you. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, one of your AIs with one intrigue card and one water away from two more points. Oh, yeah, they were close. I know. I was surprised the, the first solo game I played. I felt like they were getting like uh, resources more um, and getting victory points quicker. But again, I wasn't getting points as fast. So I did see, I think I played out almost the whole game, like all 10 turns. Uh, the first solo game I played. So obviously they got more points. It was a very tight game. I won I won that first solo game I played, but I only I got to 10 points. Uh, but the the second guy was at like 9, and I think the third guy was at like 7. Uh, third AI. Tomorrow on Rob's Gaming Table, Lost Runes of Dune. I don't know what that is. Oh, now he's saying I got to read the first two books, the rest suck. <laughs> no, I read one book. <laughs> I'll look into it. And there's advanced conflict rules. Oh yeah, and there's this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expert troop deployment is also another way to do it. So those who are looking for a more uh, challenging experience, uh, there's expert troop deployment. When playing at expert difficulty, your rivals are more selective about deploying troops to a conflict. When fighting for conflict one or two card, a rival won't deploy troops if it is already leading by two or more troops, saving them in its garrison instead. For critical conflict three card, a rival will resume deploying all the troops it can at every opportunity. So this is more smart, right? It won't just like blow all of its guys in, into a combat in those early cards and then clear out all the garrisons. Like we saw in this playthrough, there was a lot of empty garrisons uh, mid-game. And uh, this way they save them until later. Kind of like a human player should do probably, right? <laughs> I believe you, Edward. I believe you. <laughs> uh, one is fine? Okay. <laughs> okay, Keith. All right. Uh, yeah, earlier they were saying, read just book one. The rest suck. Now you come in and you're like, read, read the first two. The rest suck. Now someone needs to come in and read, read all the books. They're great. Uh, Wild Inferno says, when you get through the first seven books... The story gets really good on the 11th book, skip book 9. <laughs> Is there really that many books? I don't know. You guys are crazy. I think you're messing with me now. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to get this game cleaned up. I'm going to get out of here. Uh... Listen, I've read books, okay? I, I read the, all the Game of Thrones books except for half of the last one. Because then the show caught up and I just watched the show and I lazily didn't go back. I do read books, okay? I read books. It's 18 in total? Or it's like 18? Cynthia says, no, only read the first three at most. At the most. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, I did not know there was that many Dune books. That's crazy. Um, reading is hard. Yeah, it is. It is. I read. I read rule books all day. Is that does that count? <laughs> it went weird after that. Oh yeah, Wild in front of you're like me. I can only read rule books. Yes. Oh. They're like comic books, Rob. It will take you an afternoon. A comic book takes me like a day. <laughs> uh, get lost in the art. Woo. Pictures. Anyways. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to get out of here, clean up this game. Uh, and then i got to figure out what decks and, and heroes and stuff we're playing for tomorrow's Marvel Champions live stream. Where Mel and I are going to play some two-player. Uh, most likely with, I think, Ant-Man and the Wasp maybe we'll try. Um... Or Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver together. Some some kind of pairing that worked together. Just for fun. Uh, playing against uh, you know, a more basic villain or something. Just to play the game. Have some fun with some new heroes we've never played before. Uh, we'll be back Saturday with Arkham Horror 
Third edition, we're playing another scenario in that, like we did last Saturday. So tune in for that live on Saturday. Um, and Arkham Horror, we're playing standalone scenario, uh, Murder at the Excelsior Hotel for the first time. We're trying it for the first time on Sunday. Come join us live for that. Uh, all these live streams can be found at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table, uh, where you can set reminders for them, or you can subscribe and turn on the notifications. So you'll be reminded. Thank you all who support us on Patreon or those who are members on YouTube by clicking the join button. Also click that like button, of course. Uh, helps out the channel a ton and it's completely free. And thanks for listening to me ramble on. Thanks for joining me along here and correcting rules and catching things and helping me learn this game better. I appreciate all your time and we'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.